yeah, some days I feel unfazed Like when I'm with my friends with a cup raise And I go right back at it like an automatic More drinks, more songs, more beats to rap A new era, rap my P's and those O's Need the Phillies with my orange and black to feel home From Citizen Bank back to Camden Yards To the tale of two cities and trust we go hard Trust we go hard, yes we go hard You said we go hard, I said we go hard Rockin' my pop goosey, stockin' up on the loose Did the lyrics come easy, but the life is a doozy And yes, I'm choosy, and no, I won't settle But I still take pop off over that kettle Cause I'm talking bigger picture, and yes, I'm gonna hit you with the... How's it going everyone? It's me Ryan and welcome back to more Ruby Volume 8 reactions. Welcome to the second annual Oscars Awards show. This is going to be my reaction to it. Now, if you guys may or may not heard of what the Oscars is, the Oscars is a award show dedicated to Ruby specifically and us in the Ruby community are here to spread the positivity and choose what best fights, best scenes, best characters, best side characters or whatever you can think of. It's a lot of fun. We get to interact what our favorite things were like for example favorite character favorite environment favorite song favorite fight scene and all that jazz now this award show is hosted and created by both Klaxon and murder birds you can go check out in the description below for their channels they put a lot of time and effort into this and since it's volume 8 they got a lot of other content creators that you guys may or may not know such as that Kaito Dan, Freelancer Amber, Lady Stardust, Sunny, Semblance of Sanity, and a lot of others out there that I can possibly... It's like, there's 20 people in this video, which is crazy, because the last year it was just only Cal and Arnold. Now, they're stepping up their A-game here, which I really love so much. And, as you can see, for the Oscars, we all had to dress fancy. So, last year, I dressed up in a flannel and a tie, but I'm rocking the suit. I got the white shirt, I got the tie... I got the blazer. Basically, this is my high school prom outfit, so that's what I'm rocking with now. But hey, I kind of look good in a suit, don't I? But with all that said and done, this award show is 2 hours and 19 minutes, which is 30 to 40 minutes longer than Volume 7's. So I won't keep you guys bored too long, because I know how badly you want to see my reaction to the award show itself. And one more thing I want to mention, guys, and this is something outside of Ruby, but I recently started a coffee page, which is basically, as I call it, Patreon for beginners, so this is a way of showing support if you guys want to donate to me. It's optional if you want to, but this can actually help me improve with videos in the future. But like I said, it's optional if you want to, but if you're interested, then the link will be in the description below. I didn't have time to catch the premiere yesterday because this is a day after it's happening. All because with YouTube premiere acting up from last year, it jumped from scene to scene at some parts, which basically skipped a little bit of the nominations. So... What I'm doing is I'm sitting down, that was pre-recorded and everything. It's no YouTube premiere, it's the full video itself, and that's what I'm going for. And I may splice it up to one hour into the half of the show and another half for the other part of the show, because I never attempted a two hour long recording before. The longest I've ever got to was an hour and 30, which was the first Oscars. So I'm trying to play it safe because I don't want my computer to act up. But with that said and done, I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long. So with that said and done, we're just going to be jumping straight into the Volume 8 Oscars. With all that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm Arnold, also known hey. as Murder Birds, and I'm joined by... We're Kansas, back! And we are here to present the second annual Oscars... Remnants Power Couple. Hey, I love that. We're so happy to be with you all here tonight to celebrate Kirby's work on Ruby Volume 8. We want to acknowledge everyone mm -hmm. who has brought this volume to life bigger and better than ever before. For this year's Oscars, we have more categories than ever in order to show our appreciation to the directors, writers, voice talents, mm -hmm. animators, designers, editors, storyboarders, modelers, they put a lot of effort, VFX, especially in COVID, artists, compositors, mocap, and even the musicians. Or we during COVID, I should say. in store for this year, but I'll let you know two out of the three right away. This year, we did a ranked voting system, so the choices made by the community would be weighted more mm -hmm. fairly. We had over 10 nominees in some of the polls, but remember, we're only going to read out the top five nominees in alphabetical order. Okay, the so top if a five. if character or piece or other item is missing, rest assured it was most likely on the poll. It just wasn't verbally re-announced in this video. Uh, we're also excited to reveal that we have many of our peers from the Ruby community joining us to present tonight's awards. Yes! I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who joined in making this year's Oscars 
far better and probably the best that we've done from last year to this year. I've been looking at everyone's category submissions over the last few days, and I swear y'all are gonna love it. This is one of, if not the most- I'm already loving it so far. In Ruby history. Excluding Ruby itself and its fairy tale and myth character crossover, yep. of course. And definitely one of the biggest YouTuber crossovers I've ever seen anyway. Speaking of which, since we aren't gonna split the revenue 25 <laughs> different ways- Avengers Endgame is the most ambitious crossover. Revenue, super chats, etc. To extra, extra live. Oh, nice. And Canada. Rooster Teeth participates in this every year, so I can't think of a better way to honor That's Pog. than to support a cause that Rooster Teeth partners with on an annual basis. But that's enough from us. We thank you guys so much for your patience. Sit back, relax, and without further ado, let us begin. Here we go. Oscars, a Ruby Volume 8 award show. Here we go, dude. <sighs> this is going to be crazy. Also, I, I saw this intro before. It's for every life piano cover. It's really nice. Left in faith, left our solitude, our carefree peace. What we thought would change the world. Uh, kind of miss singing the theme song. I almost forgot the lyrics already. <laughs> Oh, man. Maybe the end. Ah. Uh, here we go, dude. The Oscars. One year later. Hello, everyone. I'm Raijin Rising, here to present to you the Rising first Rising. category of the Ruby A Rising Volume creator to the Oscars. fandom. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, I have been in the fandom since about the very beginning of it, but only since the off-season between Volumes 6 and 7 have I really started contributing to it, in, at least in the form of YouTube videos. So in mm. that time, I've done video essays, a complete restructure of the first four volumes of Ruby's Store to the format that we are more familiar with them nowadays party amount of shit posts even in a and yep. b i've done reaction videos but most recently for volume eight chapter reviews episode by episode i am nowhere near as familiar or established as many of the faces that you are about to see throughout the course of the show but like this award show i am just getting started so to kick things off nice enough about me the first category of the night is best environment Oh, best, best environment. environment. A heck of a lot of work goes into the. I saw one of them. It was the, the portals. Live in on screen. What is needed in the script gets concept art, which might get a matte painting. It gets 3D modeled. A heck of a lot goes into the composite that looks much, much, much more like what we as the viewer actually sees. And from there on, it's camera work and even the sound mm -hmm. design. With that all being said, these are your nominees for best environment. Let's see them. The central location. Central location. That's what it's called. The portals. The central location. Guardrails not included. That's fire. <laughs> nice place you got here. Enter from Atlas and Mantle on one side. Also, respect Arnold for the editing. Because I love the cards he put on the top and the bottom. One way ticket to back the end credits island. The end credits island. Anime beach episode confirmed. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> I swear, people memed on Madagascar just for this bit right here. Monstra. Monstra. What? This didn't happen in Pinocchio. What? <laughs> yeah, the Monstra is a huge whale. It's mine. Schnee Manor. Oh, you've picked the a Schnee Manor. Time to not <laughs> the new volume five work. house. Yep. We're coming in. Cause everyone was crowded there once. Things are already bad enough after what you did to father. Now you want us to harbor fugitives too? Our family has a reputation. That's what you're worried about? Your reputation? I'm just saying that we've already <laughs> lost all the house staff, and mother locked herself in her room. God, Whitley. The winter vault hasn't changed. Well 
Winter Vault slash Flower Field. Where's my Winter Wonderland, Kruby? I feel like I'm gonna read off the titles on the bottom in the description, just because it's fun. And the Oscar for Best Environment goes to... Let's see. Monstra. Ooh! Nice! Oh, the way the black ooze just... What you said. Give it just, to just, lie, and you I know, can't I, I can't describe it. The punishment would fall on my head before you... Congrats to Monstra for winning Best Environment. If what you said is true... I voted for the I island. the password myself. Well, I don't know what happens when this thing activates. So let's see if you're bluffing. I can totally see it, and I gotta say, well, let's see. my choice, my choice for best environment. Central location 14.1. End credits 13.5. Okay. Five are being read, and my choice for best environment. Wow. Is tundra. 16.6. The tundra. 15. Point, this 15 percent. Ying and Ren have their argument. Well played. In. The setting does so much for that scene, and you know, as I was saying with the camera work there's 360 degrees if i'm not mistaken i don't go i'd have to go back oh yeah the 360, 360 was crazy of that set that you see i think maybe even in, in as little as i love 360 shot shots in and media tundra it just and the way that the it just gets me every time in it you know i'd say the sound design has a lot to do with too but it just felt so rooted in that moment i i really love the way that everything went in to really put the viewer in that scene mm -hmm. as for monstra though gotta admit i totally get it it totally deserves this win you know we are seeing a new set of monstra almost every time we're in monstra we start exactly with the premiere episode of volume eight with cinder and neil walking through it Neo her throne kind of what, what did she get herself into? You there was know, a torture chamber for Oscar, cell. a we place where the lamp the was. Relic room. We see all the way up there was a room where Mercury was. Once Monstra itself is destroyed, we see what could we possibly see? A bathtub? In what I believe is a deconstructed set from earlier I don't know what I'm on. saying. But Monstra completely redefined what a location in Ruby is. It is Salem's mobile command center for Volume 8. It's a grim and a location and it does so much for salem so yeah it deserves this win so that about does it but as you are aware i am the first of many presenters for this year so on to the next and on to the next category there's more to come guys good evening ruby fans My oh she knew and, and i'm Chino. we are both youtubers and twitch streamers and that and nerd of oz making ruby content since volume four what about and i'm making ruby remnants dynamic streaming duo i upload gaming videos and ruby reactions to my youtube and I stream a variety of games on Twitch, including Hollow Knight, Sonify Strikers, and Pokemon. I also do cosplays. I'm most known for my volume for Ruby cosplay. You can see my photos on <laughs> the my Ruby hair and the velvet ears. You can find me on all my socials as Nerds of Oz. Nice. I mainly stream on Twitch, currently playing Animal Crossing Final Fantasy XIV Phasmophobia, and soon Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then Spider Man Mars Morales on my YouTube, as well nice. as the odd Ruby video. You can find me on my socials as Shinoob TTV or just Shinoob Now I gotta play Spider Man. I'm honored to be presenting the and also Miles Morales. At the Oscars this year, I've been holding it off for so long. Amazing job during volume eight. The lighting in Ruby has been one of the greatest marks of improvement in the show throughout the years, with Volume 8 being no exception. Lighting is one of the biggest components that conveys mood in any form of media. The lighting. And in a volume as moody as Volume 8, this is especially important. The lighting this year has encapsulated the emotions of each scene beautifully, and we are excited to be presenting this award today. Now, without further ado, here are the nominees for Best Lighting. Let's see it. Ironwood's Ultimatum. I have always Best Light. <laughs> <laughs> nice Arnold, nice where best lighting is. From those who would see it destroyed. Ironwood's ultimatum. Don't make light of the situation. But one individual still denies Atlas its salvation. The protector of mantle. Honestly, I voted for that one. Aftermath. That's like Nuke Aftermath. Are they inhaling monstrous ashes? Wow. Penny overlooking Atlas. I can see my house from here. Penny, maybe. <laughs> yeah, this was my second 
This is my second choice right here. Uh, I want that as a wallpaper. Just Penny looking at the moon. The tundra argument. I hate to break it to Ooh. you, but that's part of being a hunter. Jean just wanted to watch the sunset. The thing about being huntsmen, <laughs> you clearly weren't ready. Guys, stop it. Were we not ready when we? I think a lot of people voted for this one. Down a Leviathan. We got the lamp to Atlas. And then we lost it. And after that, when we had to make real decisions. Got the 360 again. Every single one wrong. I'm not going to pretend like we did everything perfectly. But if we'd done nothing, things would be even worse than they are now. How could they Actually, I think this is a 180 shot. Stuck out here while Salem has the lamp and Oscar. We've got no plan, no army. Weiss's room and storm. The city won't stand a chance. Weiss's room and storm. She really has a fireplace in her bedroom? Way bigger than I just realized that. What can we even do? Penny launched Amity and our message went out. Rich family, am I right? Just wait for someone to come. If they even come. And the Oz count for best lighting goes to Nuke Aftermath. Oh, really? Yes. Congratulations Dang. to that scene. Did did anyone respond? The Nuke Aftermath? No. Well, she'll come back. Not gonna lie, this actually looks really sick for the lighting. Plan. The plan hasn't changed. My vote went to Ironwood's I'm ultimatum. I'm rip the maiden power out of Penny Falandina. Because you're going to bring her to me. Um, I think we can all agree that the new okay, itself uh, is quite incredible visual. Oh, wow! 17.9 for Ironwood? Before, and then all of the Are you kidding me? scenes following that in the aftermath, the lighting really helps to convey this post-apocalypse. Wow! Event. Congratulations to Creepy and everyone who worked on lighting in Volume 8. A well-deserved win for this Only 2.9%, I think that's what it said. As well. Until it was a tie. Hi, my name is Erin. You may also know me as Puns of Damage. Erin! I was a Ruby reactor. Hi, there is a junior animator. I cannot wait to see your work in Volume 9. The end of Volume 1. Gotta love getting into a show right before the hiatus. <laughs> exactly. I am a Twitch streamer. I like to stream RPG and story heavy games. I like to cry about them. I am probably most known for crying about Pierre and Ecos. I have cosplayed all of Team Ruby. I have cosplayed way too many Ruby characters. And I am most known for cosplaying Pierre and Ecos because I am predictable. So yep. making a show is a very Just like the profile you have. collaborative process. And one of the overlooked aspects that can really give a shot the extra push is the visual effects. Now, this season had no shortage of visual effects, with the post-production team pulling out nice. all of the stops to give us terrifying sequences with the Hound, to the sheer mystery and mysticism of Ambrosius' domain. With this in mind, the nominees for Best Visual Effects Best Visual Effects Monster's Death Best Visual Effects Fry my eyeballs with those sweet visual effects Monster... Captain Ahab would be proud. <laughs> nice, Arnold. Nora overcharging. Nora Ooh, Nora overcharging. All hail Thora, the Thunder Goddess. <laughs> Hurry up, Elm. I can't. The nuke. Oh, the nuke. Code black. I repeat, code black. Do it. I think this is a. Not sure if a seizure warning is gonna happen. Okay, no. Winter's okay. anime slash. The anime slash. Ruby is now anime confirmed. <laughs> Bro, I popped off so hard with the anime slash. The Winter Maiden. The Winter Maiden. <laughs> really, Kirby? Winter.
And the Oscar for Best Visual Effect in Movie Volume 8 is... See it? The Nuke. Really? People are loving the nuke! Oh. Well, there's a seizure warning. <laughs> Dang. I think we can all agree that the a twenty point three Jesus cries and everyone both the winter the characters maiden. and the audience included Winter's anime slide ah come on fans where's the anime slide no, and what better way to kind of kick off all of the heart wrenching moments of that episode in all of its madness then again best respects to the nuke. Absolutely that was the first time they ever pulled like a seizure warning with the epilepsy to all of the nominees It was really really hard to pick between all of them. It was such an amazing volume post-production wise mm -hmm. and story wise But visual effects really just have been kicking it off Everything has come such a long way since the early days of volume one And I cannot wait for you guys to see where it goes in the future. Oh, I'm so excited Sal, <gasps> you Taylor I'm Taylor McNee, and I have the pleasure of being the voice of Penny. I'm a voice <sighs> actor, a 3D artist, an author, a YouTuber, and a nerd. <laughs> I was Groovy for the first few seasons of Ruby. I need my Penny plush. It's all the way over there. And environments. You know who made Nora's pancakes? I did. Torchwick's yep. cane and hat and cigar. Ruby's headphones. Yep. Velvet's camera and glowy coffee cat weapons. The Sons, penny body parts, guns, torn to pieces, room, ballrooms, ships, city streets, robot wise, lamp posts and trees and benches and stuff, and so many other things, but mostly the pancakes. That was me. That was me. All you Taylor. Me over at the Simply Feta channel, where I'm obsessed with betta fish and fish tanks and aquascapes and aquatic plants, and I really go um, in depth into my hobby. <sighs> you can also find me over at the Tabby Tabaxi channel, where I dance, and I'm going to be getting into my VR headset and rhythm games and. <laughs> nice tracking. Thank you so much to Arnold and Palak. Taylor, you are so amazing as Penny. This volume. In the Ruby Volume 8 Oscars. Concept art is a critical part of the creation of an animated series. It's what communicates the vision of the directors to the rest of the art team. It serves as a reference or Concept a blueprint art. for artists to work with to create characters, environments, props, any digital asset, even communicating moods or feelings of specific scenes. It's one of the foundations of telling a story in a visual medium like an animated series. These are the nominees mm -hmm. for best concept art. Ambrosius. Ambrosius stuffs there. <laughs> best concept art. Pay your artists with money, not exposure. The bridge, monstra. The bridge, monstra. Salem has the best seat in the house. Yeah, wait till she. Wait till you see her requiem. Mountain chase scene. Mountain chase scene. Rip to the gravity rhino hover bikes. Yeah, I wanted to see more of those. Penny overlooking Amity. What could possibly go wrong? Thank you, Bubsy Bobcat. Silver eyed Faunus. Silver eyed Faunus. FML. <laughs> Take the girl. And the Oscar for best concept, concept art. art goes to. See it. Penny overlooking Amity! Yes! <laughs> nice! Nice! Uh, Penny overlooking Amity. She got a nice view of everything. I want that wallpaper. I want that wallpaper so badly. The community voted very well. I approve of that wholeheartedly. This is a small <laughs> pause where Penny stops and she looks oh, at the Oh, second place mo mountain change sky and we feel good. Ambrosius 7.5%. Lovely peaceful moment before it all came crashing down in the episodes to come. Yep. Thanks so much to Arnold and Kalaxon for having me on this season's movie Oscars. <laughs> nice. 
Hello, distinguished guests. Today Star! Of being one of the many hosts Leader of the Stardust of Crusaders, the yes! If you don't know me, I'm Lady Stardust, but you can just call me Star. I gotta get back into JoJo. I'm on part four now. Four, maybe five years Star, if you're watching, I'm on part four. just now caught up for this volume. It's been amazing to take part of the community events, and this especially. It's been so much fun to join in on this. Also, she kind of looks like Corella. ...and the waiting, the agonizing waiting for next volume. You may remember me from crying over Roman's death all those years ago, and mm -hmm. more recently to being the number one Harumwood fan. When I'm not screaming over Ruby or other shows and movies that I like to watch, you can usually Same. find me on Twitch trying to survive in Skyrim or trying to not die in multiple video games. I think a pretty accurate way I describe myself is a professional fangirl and screamer of screams. <laughs> When I'm not screaming at screams, usually I'm either dyeing my hair or changing up my look completely. And speaking of looks, from its inception, Kruby has placed mm. great importance on character design. And these character designs are really cool, and they've inspired thousands of people all over the world to cosplay and to dress up as our favorite characters. From the jump, Ruby had drool-worthy character design, hair, character makeup, designs outfits and weaponry it really has become part of the ruby signature Got me just sure like recording. With the plot with the animation and with the music and over the years this signature has evolved we've seen characters get new looks new haircuts like my favorite blake's little bob and with these character design changes yep. kruby has used it as a plot point as a plot device to show character development and character growth these are the nominees for best redesign emerald cinder emerald Oh, let's see. Dress to kill or dress to impress. Emerald's outfit. Cinder does not deserve you, honey. Hazel. Oh, Hazel pulling out the Yakuza look. This man's sides have abs. Sheesh. Mercury. After what I just told you. Mercury's outfit. Those are this man packed the orders. same jackets of Vacuo. This man doesn't change. But look, even if what he said was true, we can't stop Salem. You told me yourself. Hazel tried, he failed, and he got in line. Yep. Nora scars. Nora scars. I want to know how I got these scars. That was pretty awesome. Simply <sighs> killed the Batman. Nora! I'm so, so sorry. Winter. Winter. Big Mass Effect and Seven Armor vibes. Until Penny either responds or is standing in front of that vault, we cannot assume her status. <sighs> Take the ASOPs. I want constant updates. And the Oscar for Best Redesign goes to Winter. Hey! Congrats to Winter. Nice. Congratulations to Winter. This one was so well deserved, and it was my personal favorite pick. This it was. Design took one of the coolest characters and made her even cooler. This volume showed us so many things. In Young Cinder, ten point three. Previous volumes, right. and Kruby knocked it out of the. Oh, Emerald got twenty point seven. Thank you, Kruby, for working so hard on something that so many people toss to the side and forget. Character design is one of the best ways to show character growth and development, and this volume was chock full of it. So thank you to Kruby, and congratulations again to our winner. Nice. Good day, everybody. It is Claxton. Hey, Cal. The and Hunter. Merch. You may have oh, look at Hunter. Probably a little bit too much, to be honest. But if you don't know, Hunter and I make Chaotic Energy Incarnate. Claxton, we do reactions, discussions, analysis, theories on Ruby, but other anime and video games as well. We also make videos about Ruby merch, giving our thoughts to what's in the store, as well as showing off the pieces we've actually bought. So we are so excited yep. to be announcing the award this evening. Not only did characters get new outfits this volume, but the fandom also got to dress up in some Ruby Volume 8 merch. Ruby merch is mm -hmm. how we rep our favorite characters. From A lot of people are freaking out about May Marigold to getting Metal merch. And Ruby, to stunning pieces for Junior and Salem, and occasionally Ruby Ramen Bowls. The design team definitely up to the ante this year. And don't forget about those pretty glasses and mugs either. You'll want those handy as we toast to the yep. winner and, of course, the nominees. These are the nominees for best merch released in Volume 8. Ruby Action Figure Collection. Best merch, consume product, rip wallet. Ruby Action Ruby Figure. Oh, I didn't get time to see it. 
Uh, Ruby Glass. Raise a glass for Team Ruby. Ruby Metal Collection. Not to be confused with the metal semblance. <laughs> Real clever, Arnold. Ruby Mug Collection. The only mug shot I approve of. The Junior Salem Penny. The Ein Lee Collection. collection. Uh, I think that one's gonna win for sure. I won't want a penny and Oscar so badly. The Oscar goes to... The Junior, Junior Salem Penny Ein Yes! Collection. Yes! Oh, they look so good. Yo, shout out to Ein Lee for the art design. Congratulations to the design team and Ein Lee. It's no surprise that the Ein Lee collection took home the crown this year. The wall scrolls were absolutely beautiful, and the shirts well, finally the, gave fans of Junior, the sticker, or the lounge, I guess what's left hat, tie dye, Salem, Penny, and the bumblebee jacket, Oscar, ruby glass, Cinder Pura. their faves. It wasn't only the art in this collection, but the characters showcase that left an unforgettable impact on the fans. We can't wait to see what wonderful and baffling creations the merch team has in store for us next volume. I'm thinking a Shade Academy sunblock, or Blake Belladonna <laughs> fish fillet knife, or an alternative- Okay, now you're giving too many ideas, Hunter. Survival <laughs> Hello, Ruby fans. Hello, Oscars audience. Ooh. Good to see you all. I'm Katie. I'm Megan. And we generally do a reaction channel that's Ruby, that's all things Rooster Teeth Post animation. Also the Rooster Teeth radio podcast. We also podcast. have a horror channel. Yay! Where we do all things. I saw a little bit of the reactions on this channel. Out of my skin, if you want to. Yes, yeah, silver. I think it was screen. mostly in silver volume screen. four. It's a good time. And of course, we have the obligatory podcast. We are part of Rooster Teeth. I don't Team want to butcher but we team up with two other Kiax hosts. And again, talk about all things Rooster Teeth animation, all things Ruby. And Megan Salinas. Very, very good time. We have been fans of Rooster Teeth since early red versus blue yeah it was like season three was what was going on when when my older brother initially got me into it and mm. i've just i've stuck with rooster teeth ever since <laughs> and i think one of my friends bought the season one dvd from gamestop oh really my bad. gosh <laughs> That's where I got it too. let the nostalgia <laughs> flow through so guys for a while lucky enough to see the ruby premiere at rtx and we've been just in it to win it yeah i got into red versus blue and we are Absolutely Last year went to be like almost two months when Ruby Volume Seven and ended. Present here, so and now I'm on season eleven. So so much. This oh, is so cool. We're so excited. And without further, I gotta rewatch season one to ten. Our first category: memes, <laughs> social currency, internet uh, hieroglyphics. The memes. That one thing that you say in real life on accident, and then you have to spend the next fifteen minutes explaining the context. Oh, boy. Memes. <laughs> We know them, we love them, the internet I love the memes. Them, and we have generated some fantastic memes. The talking dog at the season. shell shack is singing! Episode, some of them stuck around for the long haul. And these are your nominees for best memes. Alright, let's see. Before, after Ruby. Oh, those look amazing. You'd love to see a good glow up. What's 9 plus 10? <laughs> the toxin. Bill, number one dud. <gasps> number one dud. Bill's like, F the rules, I do what I want. Ah! Yeah, dang it, Bill. Sign, Bill, read the sign. Why don't you ever just pay attention? You're in here late all the time. You're co What? <laughs> Remnant's chew toy. Oh, no. Compost can go sweet. Guys, make it stop. Poor Oscar. <laughs> Team Arcos. You can do. Let me choose. Team that seems get her slays to get. Oh no. Weiss ejected. Launch. Snow White's looking pretty sus. And the winner is Squeak Toy. Squeak Toy. Weiss oh, Weiss injected. Okay. If you lie back in the tube and press launch, Zoom! there goes the Ice Queen. 
God, I was expecting the talking dog at the shell shack. This, I love this meme so much. Oh my God. Sweet of hand. Of just laughing. The talking dog. It's so. Ah, oh, 10.1. So before like, after Ruby, T Marcos, like, exactly Remnant's chew toy. What? Like, it's a lot of people sort of love the Among Us like, joke. Memes can only exist because of the, the culture and the time and place in which they're created. A confluence effect. Exactly. Yes. And that's exactly wow. what this particular meme is. And it's, we loved the scene when we first saw it. We yeah. laughed like crazy when we first saw it. And then Among Us has been the social game of the past yep. year and a half. Spread like wildfire on since we Twitter. Been able to be social. So seeing them stitched together in such a perfect way is just chef kiss material. Absolutely. Well done. Congratulations, Weiss ejected. Well deserved. All right. Sirs and madams with Sterling. Hey, so, sirs and madams for, for entertainment. Us, Thank you, Murder Birds, for putting all this together for us. Indeed, welcome to the Oscars, Musicians and guys. gamers We're creating awesome stuff. Here. Yeah, so just a little bit about sirs and madams. We do a lot of uh, reactions to Ruby, obviously, and a few other things. We also do lots of gaming on Twitch and YouTube now. We've been friends for about 10 plus years. I've stopped yeah. counting after like, yeah. seven. So I lost <laughs> like, count. Like your, your family after seven, <laughs> it's just, you know, cut it off. But yeah, I think that's uh, part of our dynamic for sure is that we've all our longtime friends who met through music, through arts, through gaming. We like stuff. We know you like stuff. Nice. So we all share our stuff. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. Yeah, the other thing that we do, I think, on our channel, it kind of makes us unusual, is we do Ruby covers. We are a bunch of crazy musicians. Um, and so we've tried to put that to work for the community. So uh, if you're interested in hearing some of our stuff, you can visit our channel and see what we've covered so far. And we've always got stuff in the pipeline. So hopefully we'll have some more stuff soon. Absolutely. Nice. Good music is good music, no matter what type of media. Music. Film, oh. TV, even a web series like this. Absolutely. I know that I personally was introduced to Ruby through the music even before the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that exceptional songwriting and exceptional performances are really what draws us in to this show so much. And these are the nominees yep. for best song. Be strong and hit stuff. Nora's bop of the on the head song. The song music in my ears. I I have a feeling friend is gonna win. Because a lot of people gushed over tears People were bawling their eyes out for that song. For every life. Sometimes it's worth it all to risk the fall. It foreshadowed Team Ruby falling! Ah! Friend. Called me friend. Am I really your friend? I have a feeling this is gonna win. I voted for this one as well. Every night I search the sky and hope to find a star who sends a light. The sky is falling. When it falls, intensifies. Oh, this was an Attack on Titan moment. The Hound Grim calling the other types of Grim. Just like the Titan screeching in this in the air for the others. Also, the sky is falling. Is that a chicken little reference? The truth, you can't handle the truth. And the winner is the winner, friend, 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 friend. Yep. Do I always Please make you feel uh, My wish came true the day that you appeared and called me friend. Answered prayer, a chance to share the world to be. A girl finally felt alive. We'll miss you, Penny. Now you're gonna make me cry. Yay and sad at the same time.
time. But I feel yep. like, you know, all Ruby songs that are the For Every Life Got Second. Are either super heartfelt or super a bop. And this song kind of transitions between the two. So, yeah. very good choice, fandom. Yeah, and it was the perfect ending for the volume just to encapsulate <sighs> everything and just, oh, like you said, the bop was just. Mm, it, we needed so it good. at the end. It was. So. Nice choice, fandom. Salutations. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Hello, ladies, Dan! <laughs> My name is Dan, the voice behind Monty loved kind of watching Dan. his videos. And before anything else, thank you so much to Arnold and Cal for inviting me on as one of this year's Oscar Award hosts. This is a fantastic way to celebrate. Also, I love the backdrop of volume, Half Ruby, Half My Hero Academia. And also, most importantly, give love back to the massively talented people behind the show, The Crew Bee. Every single person involved in this show deserve awards of their own for their hard work, pure talent, and dedication to this series that we all love, especially over this last year or so being the mother of all douche canoes. So yeah, <laughs> thank you again to Arnold and Cal, and thank you massively to every single person involved in this show. Much love and respect. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the guy who makes all the bad puns on Twitter or on several Ruby Tube live streams. Um, but Don't act like I've seen Twitter, Dan. Fan ever since the initial color trailers. And from Volume 2 onwards, I've been making several Ruby content, including episode reviews and reactions, as well as countdowns, news updates, and much more. I also react to several other Rooster Teeth works, like Death Battle, recorded by Arizal and Ruby Chibi, and just anything yep. else that I have a fancy in, like Nintendo Directs, State of Plays, and Smash Reveals. But today, I'm here to present nice. a few voice acting awards as an avid fan of the profession. Voice, voice acting. acting by itself is no easy feat, as you're limited to just one part of your body <sighs> to bring to life several unique personalities and characters of all shapes and sizes. And this year has expanded that challenge by many talents having to record their lines in unfamiliar territories, like homemade booths, different studios and yeah because everyone's shove their everyone's own recording in their home due to covid still bonnie Mae was home to some of the finest performances in the entire series including many of the talented gents in this category proving that there is a massive amount of talent in ruby's long list of voiceover stars these are the nominees for best voice actor in a supporting role a supporting role. Sabbath as Dr. Again. Arthur Watts. There's Given a Vegeta joke in here. I know it. I, need. Sadly, it I believe in you, King. Best actor in school. Science project in Chris Sabat killed it. Oh, Especially with the, with, with the oh, roast to Cinder. Helpable. Dave Fenoy as Pietro Polandina. She is right. Pietro. We have to the best Geppetto we could ask for. I don't for. care about the big picture. I care about my daughter. Mm -hmm. I lost you before. And you're asking me to go through that again? We haven't seen Maria and no. Pietro in a long time. No. Because this is the last time I we've seen the them. To watch you live your and after life. that, no Jason word. Liebrecht as Crow Bronwyn. Oh. The, first the hound throughout while, volume eight. Yep. Oh, Maybe, Jason, maybe you could I loved his role as Zeke Yeager in Attack on Titan. Without my semblance making it complicated. And now, it just feels like a childish dream. Gone. Like everybody else. Nick Glauer as Maro Amin. You call this saving Atlas? Elevated Maro's guild of remorse. For her? I believed in you. Miklar. I.e. the voice of Abakio in JoJo's now Part Five. Throwing it all away. Do you even Don't ask me how I know that. Saying anymore. Do any of you believe in anything? I used to wear this rank with pride. Now I see it for what it really is. Yo. Caller. Praise the Marrow. McCormick as Ozpin. I'd like to express again that this is my burden to bear. We've Not missed yours. hearing you after his so long. Is with me. No, it'll be even worse. Also, his voice as Agent I Washington in Red vs. Blue. I understand. I do. Can't wait to see more of him. But you've done so much already. The least I can do is give you a break and try to get us out of here. And the Oscar for Best Voice Actor in a Supporting Role goes to... Who is it? 
Chris Sabbath as Dr. Arthur Watts. Congratulations. Nice. I said I had Penny under control. Not that I could telekinetically Tele force her to do whatever I want. T telekinetically. What? I implanted a virus in her, you dimwit. She's on the set path now. Ugh. At least she should be. Also, I gotta make sure my recording is fine. To admit it, there seems to be some part of her capable of resisting. Regardless, it's only a matter of time before her mechanical body succumbs to the virus. She'll open the vault, then she'll destroy herself, and our little penny problem will be... Yeah, I think that's a, a more... <laughs> that was a perfect cut, not gonna lie. Uh, you'll probably hear me say <laughs> Where he almost got grabbed. in these categories. Any people nominated for these awards could have easily won it. They've had some fantastic performances over the course of this volume. Uh, Chris Sabat more than deserved to win it himself. It just, yep. He's been on fire... Uh, pardon the pun, given the last episode, um, with uh, his performances as Watts over the whole volume and beyond. Um, obviously, like, the standout performance is going to be that <sighs> chef's kiss of a rose against Cinder midway through the volume. Just a fantastic scene yep. that really showed uh, Chris's talent at giving such charisma and vitriol and just arrogance in that kind of, like, bravado voice of his. He's a top-tier talent in the world of voice acting by itself, and that quality just showed immensely in that scene. So Exactly. Yeah, there was a lot of good performances in this you volume. deserve this award most definitely. Congratulations again. Next up, we have Best Voice Actress in a Supporting Role. <laughs> Welcome back to again, first, second category, Dan. The nominees in this category offered up plenty of noteworthy performances that showed quality acting can be found beyond the focused faces and major characters further enriching in scene, and oftentimes stealing it altogether. Be it moments of raw passion that gripped our hearts, or brief supportive comments that lifted up our spirits before the next moment of pain. These leading yep. ladies showed great skill at making even the smallest of roles leave the biggest impacts. These are the nominees for Best Voice Actress in a Support. Best role. Voice Actress in a... Okay. Daenerys Quinones as Harriet Bree. I really had you pegged as <laughs> All the single ladies, all the single ladies. Feelings. Harriet, don't run away from your feelings, hair. When you lose someone on your team, you move on. Replace them. Like Mara replaced Tortuga, and Winter replaced... No! Aaron Zek uh, as Blake Belladonna. Aaron. Know you Ruby and Blake having a moment? Pog champ! But that's never stopped you from doing something. I was like that as a girl, but time and... A lot of other things took their toll on me. Aaron! Barbara Dunkelman as Yang Xiaolong. All of this Yang Xiaolong like spitting straight facts. Because something bad happened to you once upon a time? Summer Nobody Rose, my night. mom. Everything I've lost, every person I've lost, is because of you. And who is it yep. I've taken from you, girl? Summer Rose. My mom. Sure Ravens Everly. are biological mother confirmed. Snowshoe shipping is an SDC subsidiary. Care Everly. Meaning all the Snowshoe shipping the equals company, Amazon. Not the general. I mean, true. The pneumatic tubes allow for dust refined in the crater to be sent straight up to Atlas. We just need to find the one for the military base. Are there any buildings in Atlas that your family doesn't own? <laughs> mm. Isn't relevant at the moment. Heh. <laughs> Caden Jensen. As May Marigold. Once Robin learned May about spelled backwards as Yam. Shut up about it. Wherever she is, I'm sure she would want us doing what we can to get it up in the air and get the world talking again. I voted Besides, for Fiona's got your Kaden. friends helping out in my stead. Between our secret weapon and my semblance, you all couldn't be in better hands. I love that moment and the so Oscar much. The best voice actress in a supporting role goes to Aaron Zek. As Blake Ooh, nice! I know you don't always know what to do, but that's never stopped you from doing uh, something. Ah, the behind-the-scenes look. I was like that as a girl. The scene, the script, but and then the webcam for the acting. Things took their toll on me. I want to see more of those sure for other types of media. Survive in the world until I met you. It was a little strange at first because you so were younger, younger, but, but I've always, always looked, looked up, up to you, Ruby. And I still do. Again, just like the ladies 
all of them in this category just fantastic wow around oh look at barbara like, me personally i really love the performances oh uh, just Daenerys, two points Hayden, just two points behind aaron stuff that really made me invested in their characters the same can be said for all the ladies in this category they more than deserve their nominations let alone the possibility of winning uh as for aaron just fantastic performances all around she's really showing uh now that she's lifted off some of the weight of adam on her shoulders that uh, Blake can be a very sincere, very supportive character. We got that fantastic yep. moment with Ruby that showed that underneath all her own stress and strife, she can be the support that We're already other like people 47 need. 47 minutes into um, this show. And obviously that scream is going to live long in my head uh, when Yang fell. That's going to be like one of those standout lines and performances that's going to live long in the memory. And that just shows that Aaron just absolutely kills getting right exactly. down to the heart and emotion of a scene. Just a fantastic performance. Aaron did such an amazing job. Brilliant showing for Ms. Zek. Congratulations. We now move up a level to best voice actor. Are we paying this guy over time? <laughs> In a year that has tested themselves. Wow, Dan is just killing it with categories. Just as much, if not more, than their character's thrilling arcs have made them in front of the mic. These actors, over the course of the whole volume, took charge with consistent grade-A performances, further proving their genuine award-winning talent, be they seasoned veterans or relative newcomers to the acting scene. Yep. Whether it was performances that made the pain of suffering sting all the more, further celebrated moments of massive growth, or just entertained us over every bump on their rise and falls, these lot made sure to give every scene task their way their very best. And I guess this is the male section now. Mission accomplished. These are the nominees for best voice actor in a leading role. In a leading Aaron role. Aaron Dismuke as Oscar Pine and Oz uh, Aaron. That is why she came for you. Because she Oscar Protection Squad, where this were you? This is what you needed. This is what you deserve. Yes, but Oscar. The absolute mad the lads. Atlas, remnant. You haven't done what you've done for justice. You've done it for yourself. Bro, Aaron Dismuke is one of my favorite happened. voice actors out there. Between Oscar in this show, Senku and Dr. Stone, as and Shirogane and Kaguya-sama. I have one. Jason Rose as Ironwood. Goodbye, Ironwood. Hello, Tin Man. If there is no mantle, then there is no reason for you not to work with me. Neither of us wanted to come to that. But one of us is willing to do it. If anyone tries anything other than what I've ordered, Mantle is gone. You have one hour to respond. I voted for Jason Miles Rose. Luna as Jean Arc. You're right, Ren. I Vama I Boy my way into is skin. coming such a long way. And I'm glad I had people around me to help me see that I was bigger than that mistake. You've got people around you too. You don't have to force yourself to be strong also poor jean more you hide from the feeling, trauma more alone you're going to feel neath no ohm as lie ren and by keeping her from opening the channeling his iron, inner just angus like a city mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people are going to die because of us so what we should oh this moment was what he wants abandon mantle you think alice is still going to be able to float to safety now that she's here i don't know but these aren't the kinds of decisions we should be making because we have no idea what we're doing. Okay, both of you, cut it out. This moment I'm right here. What nobody else wants to. We're in way over our head. I was at barely more than immediate two. shock for this. In the of nowhere, How Ren said this. You cheated your way into bacon. That moment right there. William Orendorf as Hazel Reinhardt. Stop lying. Also, voices of the creatures of Grimm. When he came for me, I killed her over and over again. The longer she was gone, was only a few hours before she put herself back together. When I couldn't lift my arms anymore, she showed me that through her, William, I could have the vengeance I needed. And the Oscar for Best Voice Actor in a Leading Role goes to Jason Rose as yes! James Ironwood. Congratulations, good sir. Jason! Penny, I'm worried for your safety. Uh, Penny, where you are. Iron Daddy won again! Atlas needs you, Penny. Salem is here. 
She's not going anywhere until you change your mind about Mantle. There's still a chance for Remnant Mantle? to- Mantle? You're still worried about Mantle? Remnant is doomed, Ruby. Unless we leave, Salem so, will destroy Atlas, and with it- Any hope humanity, humanity has left. We need to think about the future. She makes it through our defenses. Everything that follows will be on your hands. <sighs> yeah, I think Jason more than deserved this award. And again, all of these he guys does. could have easily have gone into themselves. I Second place, Aaron. Place as well to Neef. I think That's he's both Oscar really and Oz. evolved over the years as Ren. Just fantastic stuff. And this volume, he really got to throw himself into some very unfamiliar but still entertaining uh, emotions and tones. And he absolutely killed it. Same for William yep. and Aaron and Miles. They just all did a fantastic job. But as for Jason, I mean, the guy has absolutely brought the character to life. He in a did. Way I think few others could. He the menacing really aura, how to the tension, strong the and intimidating tone increase. Oh my goodness! And paranoid. And this volume, we've seen the full gambit. We've seen him strong. We've seen him fearful. We've seen him paranoid. We've seen him. Uh, angered. We've seen him Stressed. creepy and chilling. The guy has an absolute masterclass performance rate with every single expression and emotion. It's like, I'm really, really respectful of Jason's performances over yep. the years, and this volume has just been in insane. One of my favorite performances from him is, I believe, an ultimatum, where we got two different laughs from him over the course of like a few seconds and he uh, Jason just twists it enough with enough of a more uh like darker edge to it that it's yeah oh so my gosh that speech was so good this is the point when Ironwood has well and, and truly also, gone off the deep end now trying to save mantle trying to save <laughs> yep this has always been about mantle hasn't it <laughs> also the part like now I have nothing I need to make a call. Just a fantastic performance, and Jason more than deserves this award. Absolutely fantastic job. Respect to you, good sir. And finally, for me. Oh my gosh, Dan, the fourth time. Actress in a Somebody call security, he won't leave. Each of these immensely talented women made. I'm guessing Dan's in charge of the voice actors and actresses. And layered content in recent years. Many of them having to branch out into vastly different material than what's attributed to their characters. And yet, these lot took to these uncharted waters flawlessly, showcasing their range with equal skill to their already richly praised work in the past. From tender or fragile to bold or chilling, whatever. I'm guessing the scene, this is the best voice actress in the lead role. Not hide away from the spotlight of center stage. It is. But instead, stood proud and showed us all why they earned that spotlight. <sighs> and Taylor, 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 Taylor. My vote went to Taylor. Peace of what makes them truly special. These are the nominees for Best Voice Actress in a Leading Role. Elizabeth Maxwell as Winter Schnee. Elizabeth Maxwell, I'm gonna kill my boss today. Can anyone Leading ladies, the lead the way. I've never wavered in fighting the enemies of this kingdom. And I won't start now. Yo! Jen Taylor as Salem. Ara, Ara. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, uh, internet, why? Uh, seeing Salem like this. <laughs> but I kind of like it. I don't much care if it is you or Ozma. Either way, I'll finally have the relic. Lindsay Jones as Ruby Rose. We want you to face has also come a long way. Using her exact same robot parts. That was curiously worded, girl. An exact Lindsay copy Jones. of her include the virus. An exact copy of her without the virus would cease to exist the second you make something else. And we kind of want to keep her around longer than that. Make her human. Samantha Island. As Nora, about Nora. We've been together our whole lives, but he I feel loves like me. I he loves me not. Ever. And I don't know if that's his fault or mine. I don't actually know who I am. <laughs> Without Ren. Be strong and hit stuff. <laughs> Pretty sad, huh? Taylor McNee as Penny Polandina. Oh, Taylor! The bridge, then go left, straight, I've right, got straight, no left, strings up, up, to hold right, me straight, down. Right, right, straight, left, left. And my name is 
Penny. And the Oscar for Best Voice Actress in a Leading Role goes to... Taylor McNee. Yes! Congratulations. Taylor! I will return to help you all with the evacuation. But they need me here. I am happy. I am happy. I guess we all have to do some things. God, I just want to give Penny a big ol' hug. Taylor, she deserves it. a fantastic job with a character Ta that... Is Elizabeth got second, nice. On the one note, chipper and bright eyed personality, but over the last two volumes alone, and in this volume especially, we've really seen the range of emotion in the character and in Taylor's performances. Um, again, any of the other ladies in these categories could have easily Katie won Newville, themselves. Jessica Negri? Just absolutely like shot to the stars and shine bright with how well she's able to explore Penny's. Uh, want of being able to make her own choices and all the desperation in her voice. We've seen her feel more human. We've seen her sad. We've seen her angry. We've seen her desperate for just attention, mm -hmm. for respect. Let and me just choose one, this one like, thing. She's hugging Ruby and she asks, do hugs always feel this warm? At that moment, you really feel that Penny has finally gained herself of a humanity that she's desperately wanted but at the same time when you look back you do you do hear just how human she is and Taylor exactly just absolutely just a fantastic performance really making her so penny endearing, deserves so charming, the many friends so bold and brave she we all need to be friends for penny Atlas. she is the kind soul underneath the metal skin she is one of the most endearing sweet brave characters in the entire series and she went out with a performance that broke me in yeah. several ways uh, taylor and showed not only just like great uh, congrats great on penny but the, the writing is elevated by taylor's beautiful sincere genuine performance and massive respect to taylor much love to you and everyone has been nominated in these categories congratulations to all the winners and everyone who was nominated. Nice. Sirs and madams, it's Cheryl. And Sterling. Hey, we're back. We're back. Hi. We missed to you. Sirs and so, madam. this next category coming up. Shooting the score present, this time around. Shout out to the two people who made the voting process possible. Oh, this they is a score now. 50 scores over the course of Ruby this season to make sure that the best ones were available for you guys to vote on. And since everybody who watches our channel knows I suck at the English language, <laughs> we just want to give a shout out to Mitchell. Uh-huh. And Sarah. So thank you guys very much for your contributions. We hope we do. You Those who are in the description as well. When it comes to storytelling, one of the most important aspects of TVs and movies is the score. The score is is one of the most important threads when you're weaving a tale. And without the character even saying anything, the music going on in the background can make you laugh, cry, or even tell you what's going on in the character's head as they're doing the scene. And sometimes a piece of music in Ruby specifically will make you remember an exact scene, an exact moment, and an exact time in our character's journeys. Here are the nominees for best episode score. After the fall. After the fall, not to be confused with the Ruby novel. <laughs> Music to my ears, part two, Electric Boogaloo. Alright. Atlantis. Aw, oh, this one, I voted for this one. Atlantis. Translation, Island of Atlas in ancient Greek. Just the do 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 do. That just gets Penny's me. Choice. Salutations. The final quality of her human you soul. Where? What is this? I thought of you, and here we are. Oh, Penny. Yep. The Hound reveal. Oh. Take. Dang, Salem, you scary. Take. Take. The girl. Take the girl. I love saying that line so much. Dang, Jason on point with the voice. Winter's gift. 
Winter's gift made him powers. The gift that keeps on giving. This was really powerful. Ah, <laughs> uh, just the choir in the background. Gives and me goosebumps. The, the hound, hound reveal. reveal. Ooh. Congrats. was a person it was a person congrats to the hound reveal for winning best score so this music added so much to that scene i think because let's see the percentage it was just heavy Winter's yeah, gift, Penny's on, choice, really at the top three. And showed you exactly what you need to pay attention to, and that is why scores are so, so important. And thank you to everyone in Kruby who worked on this amazing music for the show, because it really wouldn't be the same without it. Thank you, guys. You Jeff Williams time. and Alex Abraham. Hey, everyone. I am Phoenix Knight. A Phoenix fan Knight! For over six years nice! Now, getting into it just after Volume 2 aired. Guildmaster of the Eternal Flame. many ideas about the show in his head. But a little over three years ago, I decided to put that to good use and started making review videos for each episode as they were airing, starting to make my ideas into theory videos, branching into analyzing the different characters and semblances, the different interactions in the show, so much so that it's branched into creating my own original characters. Yeah, his videos are really good. World of Ruby and following their ongoing story on my YouTube channel, even going so far as to create a tournament based around the Vital Festival with all the of the Phoenix Festival tournament the Ruby series. And this year, even branching into using all of your original characters as well in their own tournament. Something that will be decided through the ongoing original character contest that is currently going on on my channel until the end of May. So, if you're watching this, you might be, have a chance to get involved. But right now, we are hosting the Oscars, and it is my pleasure to host two of the categories this year. Thank you so much to Murder of Birds and Kalaxon for giving me this opportunity, and two categories. to all of you who participated in this wonderful event. With every new episode of Ruby that airs, there's always this sense of wanting more after it's over, and Volume 8 took that to a whole other level. Following yep. the events of Volume 7, each episode of Volume 8 built on the last, building towards that eventual conclusion of the <sighs> overall volume. Every episode had so much work put into it, and it's so apparent that everyone who worked on it wanted it to be the best that it could be. I hope everyone who worked on it is proud of their efforts because we as fans couldn't be happier with the end result. I personally think Sorry, that I've got to check my phone. is one of, if not the best volume of Ruby so far, and I really look forward to seeing where everything goes in the future. But for now, we will see what episodes of Volume 8 are the best. These are your nominees for best episode. Best episode. Chapter 9, Witch. The quintessential Ruby experience. Chapter 9, Witch. Really Daddy Hazel know. to the rescue. Oh, I, I popped off so hard for this moment. Also, I just want to let everyone know that I pop off and scream like a little girl, so... <laughs> Do be aware of that! I, I'm also a 21-year-old grown man. <laughs> Chapter 10, Ultimatum. Operative Snee, let them go. When outranking someone backfires. You... what? Winter allowed them to go on board the creature to rescue their friend. And they never came back. This moment. They were our last chance. And now, now I have nothing. Oh, I love that moment so much. Chapter twelve, creation. Do hugs always make you feel this warm inside? Yes. Wow. More. We should probably make sure our theory works. Yes. 
Ugh. And start the evacuation. Here comes Ambrosius again. Ah, free to create. Yay, ten. Oh, it's you guys again. <laughs> We're not done with you. Ugh, fine. Chapter thirteen. Worthy. I knew Shit. Your plan would be the biggest outplay in Ruby history. Worthy. Oh, I'm sorry. Worthy. I suppose I have all of you to thank for one last lesson. Sometimes, if you want to win, you simply can't do it alone. Oh, here comes this moment. Okay, Chapter it didn't 14, show the whole thing. The final word. I have sacrificed and everything. that's checkmate. No. You have sacrificed everyone else. You closed the borders. You squeezed mantle until it broke. Mm. And the Oscar for best episode goes to Chapter 14, the, the final, final word. The final word. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there was a lot to unpack in this chapter. Seeing Team Ruby, Neo, Penny's body, and Jean fall into the void. Oh man. This is honestly so fitting for how Volume 8 was structured, with the siege of Atlas starting at the beginning of the volume and culminating in everything that we saw throughout leading up to the finale. Yep. The hacking of Penny, forcing Team Ruby and everyone to get the Relic of Creation and ultimately abandon Atlas, trying to save as many people as they could. Exactly. And the episode itself had everyone on the edge of their seats. Who is going to fall? And we all Who broke down. to survive the volume? And don't forget don't the tears. Started about the cliffhanger at the ending you want to talk about leaving us off so we wanted more we ended with wonderland not knowing the fits yep. of half we don't know if it's the shallow sea we don't know if it's honestly, the girl who's up with the world heck it, 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 it could be even san diego so it's in ruby and i'm really looking forward to seeing where this will take us in volume nine hello everyone my name oh is the judgmental Michael critter i'm super jazzed to be a part of the oscars and thank you all for a jack of for all trades right in the now. fandom Just Thank you so much. <laughs> As for who I am, I do Ruby reviews. I talk about lots of different stuff like character designs. I make redesigns. I take a deeper look at cinematography. I have Ruby supplemental material, mm -hmm. Ruby fan made animations, and just a whole lot more. A real grab bag of Ruby stuff going on over here. Yep. <laughs> Ruby's got a massive cast of colorful characters, both figuratively and literally. I saw a little and bit of year, Judgment Ruby Critters videos. A bunch of brand new characters who always end up becoming our new favorites. Was a show like Ruby, who has a near constant rotating cast of characters, it's important for the fresh new faces to leave a strong enough impact to still resonate with audiences, even amidst the old well-loved classics. This category proves how a character can leave their mark on the show and end up beloved by fans, no matter how yep. new they are to the series. These are the nominees for best new character. New character. Ambrosius. Yes! The newest member of the Blue Wing group. Seals a little we'll remember this groovy <laughs> seems someone has come to engage my creative wife i voted for the blue honk all i'll say is it better be worth it after my last project a floating city a pedestrian a pedestrian fiona's uncle v gus sorola's final in ruby yep crap thanks uncle we'll handle it let's hope he's not a kiss ass Madam, just like to make Simmons. Sure the laundry is folded, the dishes are Madame. spotless, and the floors are clean enough to. Without you, I am nothing. Now hurry and get to your chores. The floor looks filthy. God. Roads. I've seen you around and. Ah, oh, roads. You really know how to pick them, roads. The most fair treatment. Yeah. I can't really blame you for what you're thinking. You don't know what. But I'm... hurting them isn't going to make your life any better. You can run, but you're gonna be running for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. The stepsisters. Cinderella would like to speak with you. You missed a spot. <laughs> oh god. Yo, shout out to Emma Lee for voicing the stepsisters. 
Well, I think months ago I heard and her voice Oscar as Junko from Zombieland Saga. Too? So amazing. <gasps> Ambrosius! Yes! Yes! <laughs> I suppose I could do a little... Add a touch of... A.K.A. Merlin Daddy. Ambrosius won! And how much would be... Her? God, I love him so much. To the surface. This is all very exciting. And very dangerous. Uh, I don't know what the results are going to be. We don't have any other options. We believe in her. Mm -hmm. Then ready yourselves to witness my artistry. Yeah. Yo, uh, is such a top tier best boy. I'm not too surprised he won. He almost immediately. Yeah, look at that pie the chart. Flippant, carefree demeanor, which is a very fun contrast compared to Jin's more serious nature. From the way he rolls around, swinging his feet back and forth playfully, or how he eagerly yep. zips around as he starts envisioning his next biggest creation, it's Ambrosius's. Kind of reminds me of that really the Will Smith genie. Be above and beyond, his design is like really striking and memorable, which is cool because the similarities between him and Jin is a lot of fun to see. But I like how he still looks uniquely himself, even though he shares similar color palettes and like concepts with Jin. Ambrosius really does feel like his own character and that's really awesome. And it helps that his voice actor did just an amazing job. You can tell everyone who Valentine worked on Stokes. had fun with him. The voice actor, the animators, the writers, everyone who worked with Ambrosius was having fun and it helps make Ambrosius feel fun. His, 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 his energy is very infectious. <laughs> he's funny, he's personable, He's a little bit of a tricky trickster. <laughs> yep. I, I love him. You no, know, he thinks real Do highly of himself, but fall. also like he's a cool guy. And I just, I just can't wait to see him again. I can only imagine his sassy personality would be. Also, a lot I just of realized this. Bouncing off of the more since grouchy, Jin answering three questions, like and Salem. And you can wait another hundred years. Wouldn't that also Thanks apply to Ambrosius with the staff? Because you asked three questions and now three then, requests for creation. Wouldn't you also have to wait another hundred years? Again, Ruby fans. Hello that was just again, a theory Oscar I had. Viewers. I'm Katie. I'm Megan. And we are back with another category. And this one is near and dear to our hearts. <laughs> so let's take a moment and talk about the Grim. Now, as we mentioned Grim. in the previous category, we are horror fans. She's a horror fan, and I'm here for it. <laughs> and that means we love the Grimm. Your favorite thing that Ruby does is when it turns into a horror movie. Absolutely. That is, that is Ruby when it's Let's at see, its finest. The or Hound. Is most enjoyable to me the is Lancer's. when it goes full horror movie. I got Lancers, but factor in that is the Silverfish. The, grim, the monsters that roam the saying. realms of Remnant. As always, we have some wonderful new Grimm, and if you've watched our channel, if you know us, you know that we like to nickname them. For example, the Wyvern is... Kevin! And the Leviathan Kevin. is... Nessie. And of course, Nessie. the Nuckleby is... Jim and Randall. Jim and, Jim and Randall. <laughs> Although I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which is which. Nice. Uh, Jim's the guy, Randall's the horse. I think that was it. That yes. was it. <laughs> because Randall had no dialogue, he just screamed. <laughs> Of course, Volume 9 has given us a bevy of incredible Nine. new oh. Grimm to yeah, there was a watch and mistake. name it's and fear, but mostly name. And of course, we would like to present the nominees for Best New Grimm. Senator. Senator? Why did they get more disgusting? Thank you, Blake. I was just about to read that. I don't know if you can hear Dang, me. Remnant, you scary. The Hound. The Fox Faunus and the Hound Grim. Wait, it's using awesome the Hound was crazy. But the Grim aren't that smart. The first Ravagers. talking Grim. The portal won't last. Ravagers. Also present in the After the Fall novel. Dang, now they gotta animate after the fall and before the dawn. Sulfur fish. Winner of the summer 2020 Grim contest.
And the winner is... Let's see. Can get a drum roll? Sil Silverfish? Smart Alec. <laughs> oh, the hound! <laughs> the hound! I kind of saw the words bleed through the paper. Oh, the hound. We love the hound so oh, much. We love the hound. 38.5%. <laughs> I mean, in some and ways, the Centaur, I have no 21. doubt that the hound going to win. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the hound was the standout grim of this season. And, of course, in keeping with our naming tradition, the hound somehow went through four names for us. <laughs> started as Ditto because he was a shapeshifter. Ditto. Started to Krampus because he took away children. Krampus. And then it became Soylent because Soylent hounds are people. Soylent. And John Doe because we don't know who's in there. Yep. So... Any one of those works, but we love the Hound oh, so much. Um, I always appreciate uh, again when Ruby goes full horror movie, and also just the uniqueness of each Ugh. rim that encapsulates like the horror of the world of Remnant. And we got that with the Nuclevy, we got it with the Apathy. Um, the Apathy, and, like from Volume the Four. The Hound, I think, is like. Take. I think the, the hound step in this evolution. The first knowledgeable grim to be smart, that, the and the first speaking one grim and taking it to its logical conclusion. Oh, I would say logical <laughs> next step. <laughs> That's true. Well, one fear yeah. over yet. One fear, except the fear is Salem, and it encompasses many. Yeah. So yes, congratulations, Krampus, Soylent, John Doe, the Hound. Whatever you we call it. This win. And thank you to everyone who voted. Thank you for inviting us on. We had a fantastic time. Thank you for watching. Hello, and once again, I am Raijin. Hey, Here back to, to Raijin. You the results for best male and best female character in a minor role. Though you Ooh, a minor not role, okay. This category in the typical theatrical awards show, best character <clears throat> in a minor role is really great to have so that every character, no matter what part they play in the plot, can get their due, can get their time and be awarded for it, when they might not be big enough to be considered for the supporting role category. You know, they may only get a couple lines, or they might be in only one or two episodes throughout the entire volume, but they make their mark on the yeah, story Crow, Robin. and that's worth considering. We only saw them in the a starts, couple episodes, not these all These are your nominees for best male character in a minor role. Ambrosius. So she isn't. I, I is going embodiment of literally. This. Enjoy your 50 uh, minutes of fame, King. There's something eating away at her. Um, I'm guessing you think you have some clever- Bro, Ambrosius. Here. Just know, I will give you exactly what- I'll be surprised if Ambrosius won again. I'm complaining when it's not what you wanted. Blind Seben. Klein! Oh. I heard there was a patient here. The cake butler has returned. I, I am so sorry, Klein. It's my fault that father. Please don't worry, my snowflake. It, it had nothing to do with you. It's so amazing to see Klein again. It had everything to do with Jacques. <laughs> Mercury Black. Those are Salem's new orders. Ruby Volume Eight Speedrunner. <laughs> but look, even uh, what clever. he said was true. Can't Big guy's not gonna put up a fight. You told me yourself. Hazel tried. He failed, and he got in line. Big guy's not gonna pick fights. He can't win. A pick fights. He's not gonna win. Yeah, it's been a long time since Rhodes. we've seen. How old are you? Rhodes. Ten. She took your sword you to kill like him. Us? Rhodes. You wanna be a huntress? Huh. <laughs> then we've got about seven years. For what? Training. To train you for the huntsman exam. Tyrion Kalos. Vacuo is going to be so much fun with you. So devoted to someone so incompetent. <laughs> I love that line so much. The will of our goddess, dismembering the very body of I love Tyrion. He's one of my favorite villains in Ruby. Past failures. And the Oscar for best male character. Ambrosius or Tyrion? Ghost Please. You? Ambrosius. Oh! <laughs> well, everything appears to yes. be in order. You were second award. Disappointingly so. So, it's done. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, and one last point of clarification about this central location of yours. Do, Do not, not fall. fall. Okay, and with that dire warning. Yeah, and Bruce said, "Do not fall," but we're I transported said, to a tropical he is paradise. Quite the character, and honestly, I didn't think we would see him. We have wow, Klein got second, Tyrion third. Up, so clearly, if <laughs> Jacques six point eight, no one loves Jacques. Seen, Screw him in this clip on tie. We need to be okay with putting an entire kingdom's worth of lives at risk to be able to use it, and I think that ultimately it came out very well. And his voice acting is great. His animation is yep. great. I love the animation that happens Everything about the different him, just... relic spirits because they're floating and they have nice. so many different particle effects and visual effects. And so the animation that happens with them on top of already, you know, being different from a character who's rooted by gravity, they're just so expressive regardless. So it's always great to see them. And of course, for the rest of the nominees, it was great to be able to see Klein again. Mercury and Tyrion. I have the sense that with Mercury and Tyrion, their yep. scenes in Volume 8, or rather their one scene at the end of, I believe, Chapter 7, that is going to be so important when we get to the Vacuo arc. Whenever exactly. That's uh, that going to be so important to really remind Bro, just imagine this is where their character what Emerald's going to think to Tyrion see Mercury, is Mercury and is Tyrion. I feel like we're going to need to call back to this scene. But that's all I have about really to say for the male characters in a minor role. So now, these are your nominees for best female character in a minor role. Elm Ader. Don't do this. There's still a Getting to the battle. root of the problem. Why did you just let me do my job because you're our friend. Enjoy your 15 minutes of fame, Queen. Fiona Time. No, Crimson. Fiona. You and your she team girl is such a little level. scream. Thyme. The Mantle police are helping us clear the hospital, but they're gonna need backup. Huh. You're doing great, Fee. Robin would be proud. I feel like you should be doing this after flexing on the news like that. I can't believe she Jin. said flexing. Jin. Jin, I'm looking respectfully. Why, hello again, old man. Did you have a question for me? Maria Calavera. Don't you think Maria? People telling her what to do. She and Pietro dipped after Chapter Five. Yep. Prepare for launch. It's our Please. only option. She is right, Pietro. We have to remember the big picture. I don't care about the big picture. Willow Schnee. We have a generator. Mama Schnee got a dump truck. <laughs> so kind yep. of you to join us, Mother. Believe it or not, I am above drinking in the dark. <laughs> and the Oscar for best female Bro, character Willow. in a minor role goes to. Let's see. Willow. Yo, Mama Schnee. It's outside Winter's old room. I. You can kill it, can't you? What is it doing? I'm. Congrats I'm to sure. Willow. It's acting strange. Best female character in a minor role. Why is it here? It doesn't matter. Just keep an eye on it so I can track it down. Right. Right. I gotta admit, I thought this category would be a toss-up between Willow and Maria. At least for me, I can understand Maria, Maria got Maria second. Getting it Fiona after third. Her fight scene in Chapter Five Let's against see. Neo being the Joanna only character in the and Cinder stepsisters to really, really give Neo a hard time. It was great to see Maria just have fun yep. fighting against Neo of all characters. And at least for Willow, Mama Schnee definitely steals a lot of the scenes that she's in. I gotta say, exactly, it. she's a lot of fun to watch in her own ways. And with volumes 7 and 8, she is the essential view into the broken home that is Shinny Manor. And getting to see exactly. Whitley in a new light, especially, too. A lot of that comes from Willow. Like, we know... Congrats Weiss's to Willow. Relationship. Also, we shout out to Caitlin Glass for putting up the performance. For a good portion of the show, but 
now seeing it through Willow's perspective, I feel a lot more important than anything that we had really seen up until this point. And I loved seeing, especially as well, her uh, security cameras coming back for Volume 8, Chapter 8, the fight against mm -hmm. the Hound. Really, that really were cool hidden along see, the house. You know, thinking in Volume 7, it might have just been there for that one moment to justify or explain that one thing. But now, no, it's really adding this extra dynamic, this extra element to the horror of chapter eight and that was amazing and willow she's a she's kind of a meme too so she's got that going for her. yep <laughs> but that being said that's it from me please enjoy the rest of the volume eight oscars <laughs> and i hope to see you around the fandom all right what is the people of the internet My name hey is amber and as you all know i'm a ruby tuber sort of i also love pokemon kingdom hearts various games and if Grimm were Pokemon, she'd Pokemon collect them all. I love to stream, and hopefully I get to do more of that in the future. So as you all know, I'm also part of the Oscars, but as one of the hosts. And I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. Last year, I did both when Volume 7 ended. And being this again now, mm -hmm. but and again, as a host, I'll be doing funniest moments that happened in Ruby Volume 8. Now, Ruby has a lot of moments throughout the years, whether it be hurtful moments happy moments, uh, moments that make you actually yep. like connect with the character. There's one kind of moment in Ruby that helps us cheer us up and give us a good laugh. That's right, I'm talking about funny, funny moments. moments, like I said before. From Ruby getting blown up back in Volume 1, to Jean getting hit on by thirsty moms in Volume 7. These uh, are the yep. funniest moments in Ruby Volume 8. Another casserole. Jean away from Ren and Nora. Jean third wheel arc. <laughs> Return the favor from Volume 3. <laughs> Under the bridge, buddy. Y'all laugh to keep from crying. Gonna go see a primates at hell. <laughs> Yo, Jean's improved in comedic Penny purposes. Ruby semblance. Do not worry. Ruby is capable of traveling. <laughs> Ruby go. Ruby Rose go. By breaking herself down to her molecular components. Thus, thus negating her mass. And then reassembling them at the destination. Theoretically making it yep. possible for her this to moment. transport all of us in the same way. As mass no longer matters. <laughs> Rock hitting Jean. <laughs> Give Stone face a new meeting. Everyone, ow! <laughs> also, that one citizen just dive. I'm uh gonna need your attention. Weiss gets vented. So how do we use this? Thing? Ice Queen be looking pretty sus again. Should be simple. If you lie back in the tube and press launch. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong lever! <laughs> it's like pull the lever, crunk. And the Oscar, lever. her funniest moment in Ruby Volume 8 goes to... Weiss gets vented. There it is again. Yep. Ow, ow, come on. That was a once in a lifetime experience. Ow. <laughs> yep. And I can see why. I, and I'm sure many of you, absolutely lost it when Nora just happened to hit the one button all the while Weiss was trying to explain how these shoots work. Thank you to everyone who voted. Yep. This year's Oscars. Also, when she got shot up there, for keeping and when I saw two of I was like, Honestly, "What are I you doing? Haunting my fun coaster and I'll infiltrating my lair?" Back in high school, and then when I first saw Ruby, I immediately like became such a huge fan of it, as you can see from like my posters. Yep. <laughs> and the many and many figures I've bought throughout the years. From the very beginning, that one Genlock poster on your door. The transition from how it all started to right now, all the voice actors, all the animators, screenwriters, everyone is awesome. And I can't wait to see more of this in the future. And for the Ruby community, it's just such, such a fun thing being a, to be a part of. And I hope you all enjoy this as much as I do. Again, thank you all so much for voting. Nice. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy, AKA Jeremy Nor Productions. Productions. Let's so go. I'm excited to be here with everyone for the 2021 Oscars for Ruby Volume 8. I've been a fan of Ruby ever since the end of Volume 2, and I can't wait to see what Kruby does with the rest of it. Now, my channel mm -hmm. doesn't exactly have much Ruby content at the moment, but Cal and Arnold keep inviting me back for these things, so I'm sure I'll He's make a chill and active Ruby fan on Twitter. Sometime. When it comes to Ruby, one of the things that the fans love most, and arguably even the people that work on the show love most, is the characters and how they interact with one another. Whether it be a familial relationship, a platonic friendship that's as strong as any type of familial blood, or even a romantic relationship for you shippers out there. And so, ah. let's bring attention to that. The contestants for Best Relationship Development for Ruby Volume 8 are... Emerald and Hazel. Daddy Hazel better come back in Chibi. Friends, family, and lovers. Best character development. Yeah, 
Uh, Emerald and Hazel. Hazel. Ugh. Go. Dang, Hazel. Penny and Winter. You were my friend. Oh. Thank you for trusting me with this. Two volumes of role gone, reversal. I won't be gone. I'll, I'll be a part of you. Good. I'm glad. Oh, that moment. Ren and Nora. Why didn't you say anything? Ren and Nora. So we failed as a team, Boop. but we succeed as a team too. I was the one holding us back. Not John. Not you. Me. Well, you're wrong. All I do is make dumb jokes and smash things with a hammer. What? That's not true. Oh. You put everything you have into what you do. You support everyone around you. You help without worrying about how it might hurt. And that's what I love about... That's why I... Mm. I love you. Oh. Ruby and Penny. I was the protector of Mantle. Nuts and dolt shippers I feel for you. I am much more than that. And I wish I was not. Mm. But you're still you, Penny. Mm -hmm. By becoming the Winter Maiden, you did protect Mantle. Yep. You got a heart. Thank you, Ruby. Weiss, Whitley, and Willow. Alright, these three. How I wish Winter could be here. Tell me about it. I didn't forget you. And the Oscar for Best Relationship Development in Ruby Volume 8 goes to... Oh! I'm not surprised in the least. It's Red and, and Nora. Nora! When my mom ran from the Grim... Renora. You found me. We became Ren and Nora. But I realized on this mission apart... After seeing them for volume I seven. Just Nora. Like then screw is. talking. And if I'm ever going to find out, then I have to do it alone. Because I've always loved you, Lyren. Mm-hmm. And that pretty This was such an amazing moment. Like it's doing a lot better. But I still gotta get mine sorted out before I can be the partner you need. Is that okay? Oh, this scene always brings a tear to my eyes. It's definitely okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. I figured Ren and Nora were going to win. For me, they definitely were one of the best relationship outcomes to come out of Ruby Volume 8. It's very mm -hmm. rare media, at least in my opinion, to see a romance that actually comes out and says, "Dang, look at the others two right there." People need to figure out who Aesop's Ironwood of Winter as a person. Crone Robin, Cinder and Salem, Yang and Ruby, and Blake and Ruby, that could become something toxic. And it's just something that speaks to me very personally, and I'm definitely glad that everyone on Kruby decided to go uh. that route. All I can say is, wow, this is amazing. Thank you again, Arl, Cal, and everyone else for giving me this opportunity on the Oscars. And if anyone from Kruby is watching, I'm probably fanboying on the inside because of that, but like, <laughs> I'm just excited to be a part of the Ruby community. I'm glad I could be part uh. of this project. So yeah, have a nice evening, guys. Yeah. One of the best things about watching an ongoing series Back to is Phoenix seeing Knight. different plot points are building towards eventual conclusions. Phoenix rises conclusions from the ashes to end up once being more. Something completely unexpected. And volume eight had we got forty minutes left. Seeing different things hinted throughout the volume, building towards an eventual reveal. And when it came time for that reveal to happen, it ended up being something much larger than what was expected. <sighs> or just something that blindsided us completely. As someone who makes different theory videos on the plot of Ruby, it was an absolute pleasure to watch everything unfold throughout the volume. These are your nominees for the best twists and reveals in volume eight. Here we go. betrays Neo and Watts. Oh, uh, an actual galaxy brain play. I can't believe it's not butter. 
<laughs> you should have never threatened me. Uh, honestly, I kind of expected this moment. Because Cinder only cares about power. Should Let's face it. post credit scene, Wonderland. Volume 9 is going to be pop-off. Uh, Wonderland. Yeah, we didn't know what was going to happen in the void. The Hound is a silver-eyed warrior. Silver-eyed warrior. Just be just the beginning of Take. these experiments. The girl. Take the girl. All right. Take the girl. Honestly, I think the Hound is a Silver-Eyed Warrior. Watts hacking Penny. The turning point of the volume. moment <laughs> and the oscar for best twist or reveal in volume eight goes to hound the hound, silver hound. eyed hound <laughs> gotta show this moment are you kidding me Honestly, no surprise on this one, as it was probably the largest reveal in Volume 8, and the amount of theories and speculation in the Ruby community is a testament to that. For the exactly. first half of Volume 8, like Summer Rose possibly being it was alive, a talking grim, and the amount that it was hyped up being an experiment that Salem had worked on, the speculation of if the Hound was Summer Rose or if it was going to be a character significant to our main. Oh yeah, we were all of the different theories <sighs> and ideas surrounding it. It's a lot to the eventual reveal that the Hound was a silver-eyed warrior. This was an amazing plot point to put in the volume, and the best part about this twist slash reveal is it's not over yet. There is still more nope. to build on with it, and I am so looking forward to where it is going to be taken in the future. All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance, Semblance of Sanity. Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And uh, Jacob and brothers. Caleb. We have a semi-healthy brother bound by stories. Oh, uh, YouTubers. Uh, we love just getting into the emotion, the exploration of humanity, some passionate discussion, rambling, ranting, and then also just creating beautiful memories surrounding those stories. That's just what we live for. It is our jam. Mm -hmm. But we do have a few titles. Some self-proclaimed. <laughs> some given to us by others. The first is, of course, we are dramatic narrators. Mm -hmm, indeed, and I am a notorious trivia master. Mm -hmm. They got the narrator voice. And, and one of us, I'm not going to say who, is a published author. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's battle lines. Check it out. Also, we are professional <laughs> anime shillers of the highest quality and grade. Indeed. Uh, so I will, of course, take this moment and platform mm. to shill Vinland Saga. Go watch it. It's incredible. It's Vinland a Saga. Story That's some of my watch list. And uh, brutality and, and humanity. Uh, yes, go watch it on Amazon. And we are hosting the best tearjerker category. Yeah. Over the years, Ruby has hit us with some of the most painful cliffhangers, backstories, and deaths. Oh, uh, cliffhangers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, okay. But volume four, just shouting out here. What about the training? video that Pira left for Jean. Like that Oh man. That's such that's such a simple bit in episode two of volume four, but it just destroys me every single time. Can we just give a shout out to literally any time that home plays. I cannot listen to that song without crying. Yeah. That that'll yeah. do it. That'll do it. These are the nominees for best tearjerker. Hazel's death. Oh, uh, all in favor of Ruby Chibi Hazel, say aye. Aye. I also want to see Chibi Raven, Chibi Ironwood. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> hey, we'll let this ball of onions here. Penny's death. Oh! Uh, <laughs> this moment. 
Way to salt the wound, Kirby. Obviously this moment. Ruby and Yang's summer talk. You know what that means then. Ruby finally said mom, let's go. I wouldn't worry about that. That's what happened to mom. Oh man, dude. When I saw its eyes. Silver eyes. Salem used to kill people with silver eyes. Like Maria. But she's always wanted me alive. Vine's death. Oh no. <laughs> I hope this lives with Harriet for a while. God, the music. Vine Zeki. You will be missed. Yang Fallen. The girl who fell through the world. Honestly, I I wasn't crying. I was just wide-eyed at this moment. I know there are a lot of people out there who cried for this scene right here. Blake wasn't there on time. And the Oscar for Best Tearjerker goes to... Penny's Death. But there is yep. something you can do. No, I, I don't know where the others are, but why so give us time? Let me choose on. this one thing. Trust me. Yeah, well, makes sense. Well deserved. Uh, that's kind of to be expected of yeah. the five options of that course. were there. I really everyone loves put Penny. Yang's and Ruby's summer talk as being like up there meta wise as like one of the one of the contenders there because I mean, Penny's death. No contest in no my mind. The second time. Yeah. Like okay, like yes, we got another redhead dying tragically. And Jean Thanks, was, Rooster Teeth. But 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 what can I say? Jean's involvement was a bit more extreme this time than last time. At least he got to be there. Yes, yes, exactly. Caleb. He got to be there, and it wasn't just because he did. Redheads and carrot tops are forever cursed no, in Ruby. This time, it's because he actually killed her. Oh my oh, god! Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. I'm I, sure the uh, trauma won't stack up on on him. No, 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 no. not at all. Oh my god. And as far as imagine how he's going to explain it to volume, Ruby you know, and the I, others, he's going to be without his crew, you know, in the void place with the island and all that. So that's going to be its own thing. Ugh. Well, yeah. Thank you for inviting us to the Oscars. And Indeed. I'm sorry for dropping the uh, the yellow uh, letter all over the place there. But I mean, you know, it's like a golden child lost in the void. Sounds very familiar yeah yes. yep just a, just a little just a little yeah just a little hi everybody my name is tanner better known as blizzick and i'm going to be presenting the award for a ruby Best scholar Monologue. and judge of fine you whiskey me, i'm a writer and i make video essays on the writing in all sorts of media uh, mostly anime and a lot of ruby but i do talk about video games and movies whenever it strikes my fancy we got 30 uh, more really big 34 more minutes left coming up on the horizon and some even more fun stuff planned for after that but for now i am just really really excited to be a mm. part of this totally awesome celebration of ruby volume 8. when it comes to fancy schmancy wordsmithery ruby characters are a mixed bag Sometimes they're a little too lost in each other's eyes to do much besides bumble through their words, but other times they unleash a monologue so perfect you can tell that they've been practicing in the bathroom mirror for weeks. These speeches give these characters an opportunity to externalize their complicated inner worlds and advocate for their personal ideologies, 
and they get to be as dramatic as they want in the process. These are the nominees for Best Monologue. Best Monologue. Ironwood's Ultimatum Speech. I have always promised to just Whisper sweet you. nothing it's into technology. my ear. It's future. From those who would see Whisper it sweet it means nothing. To I don't know. Our enemy is crippled. Ironwood's ultimate of individual still denies If I kill Atlas, thousands, will salvation. you work with me? The protector of mantle. I know how much mantle means to you, so I'm going to give you a choice. You either die a hero or you, you live long enough to see Atlas yourself Academy become the villain. And do your duty. Help me save as much of Atlas as I can, and mantle will be left to fend for itself. May's speech to Team Ruby. No, see, you just make up your mind already. This is not a situation where everyone wins. Now you all can come with me to help in Mantle, or I can drop you off near the front lines if you still want to help Atlas. Your uncle and Robin can't save us. We have to choose. So, so choose. choose. Ozpin's apology. I was recently reminded. Trust love. Tale. A young girl flees the consequences of a choice to a magical place. But, having never learned from her initial failure, she only succeeds in spreading it. The girl who fell through the world? I failed all of you. To a magical world? I should have trusted you with the truth. And should never have run the day you discovered it. And I hope it's a risk you can take on me again. Ruby's speech to Remnant. My name is Ruby Rose. <laughs> Dad, I'm a live streamer now! And if we've done everything right, then I'm talking to all of Remnant. This right moment, now. we got hit with a lot of returning characters. But right now, you all need to know that the kingdom of Atlas is under attack. Saffron, Terra, along with oh, Adrian. Crazy. But I promise Professor Goodwin Shopkeep. and Headmaster Theodore of Shade can verify this. And Glinda Goodwitch. might even be able to help organize a way to fight back. Sadly, General Ironwood can no longer be trusted. Watts's speech to Cinder. <laughs> Do you need some ointment for that bird? <laughs> of course you are, because that's just what you do, isn't it? Shout out to Chris the Bat on this scene. How has that worked out for you? You stormed into Freya's room thinking you could take on Ironwood's top fighter and war machine. But you couldn't. And that machine became the Winter Maiden. Yep. Oh, and let's not forget your deal with Raven Brownwind. Get all your enemies in one place so you'd have a shot at revenge. Exactly. Oh, someone could have warned you against such a miserable idea. Oh, wait. I did. True that. And the Oscar for Best Monologue goes to... Watts' Speech to Cinder. Yep. But you pushed ahead, and you lost it when all you had to do was your job. Um, think you're entitled to everything just because you suffered. Thank you, suffering Watts, for enough. putting it out there. Can't just be strong, you have to be smart. You can't just be deserving, you have to be worthy. But <laughs> all you have ever been is a bloody migraine. Ba -na 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 -na. Right. I'm for that one, so I'm Air very noise. glad that the nope, just me, okay. at my back. Yeah, there was a lot of great monologues this volume, but I don't think you can compete with someone who knows he's right and just has nothing to lose. Not to mention Chris Sabat is amazing. And also, I think it's just really, really satisfying to hear the sorts of things that the fandom has been saying about Cinder for years finally exactly. vocalized by a character in the show. So that was a really satisfying element of it, too. I want to thank all of you for your votes. I want to thank Murder of Birds and Kalaxon for having me at this wonderful community event. And of course, I want to thank Kruby for giving us another wonderful, wonderful volume. I am very excited to be a part of this, and I'm very excited to see you all again in Volume 9. Ta-ta. Hi, I'm Rigo. This is... Whoa. This isn't you, all right? What? Oh, one you sec, all one right? Sec, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what the okay. heck? <clears throat> Sorry. Hi, I'm Rigo. 
and this is the Oscars. There it is. I'm ecstatic to be here. If you don't know, I don't know. Me, are you all kind of new around here? I'm a paper cutout that talks a lot about Ruby as well as other things. I do crazy theories, like if you ever want to find I out. I like the little tux is going on. Then I can more than help you out with that. Not to mention I do reviews. At the moment we're going through Avatar episode by episode, and I'll be talking about some full anime series quite soon. I talk about movies a lot. We're likely going to start doing some movie-based content on the Ooh, channel. Ooh, nice. I just started a new and exciting thing where we're designing characters, and I'm working with my audience to build the idea of a mirror universe in Ruby. And not to mention my big one. My Ruby Runs project, where we run through the plot of Ruby in what if scenarios. Excuse we me. are currently several episodes deep into what if Jean died instead of Piro. And let me tell you, it Ooh. is quite an emotional ride. But we are not here to talk about me, we are here to talk about Volume 8, so let's get on to the award. When Ruby first started, it was sold to many on the fight scenes alone. The choreography, as well as yep. the unique weapons and enemies, defined a reason to watch it all and help get people on board with the show to start. These days, the characters and story have gone far beyond that point, and there's obviously a lot more to be Jump all the way ahead. Fights. However, at the end of the day, it's good versus evil, right versus wrong, and eventually swords need to be drawn. When that happens, it's do or die, and as we all know in this show, dying is certainly a possibility. So, while it's no longer the main selling point of the series, yeah, death is a major theme in Ruby the now. In the survival of our characters, with signature weapons, dust, aura, semblances, maiden powers, and more at their disposal, a fight in Ruby is always a fight worth watching. That being said, it's time to find out which was the best. These are the nominees for Volume 8's best fight. Best fight. Everyone versus Ironwood. I have. Feels Surprise, weird. mother! So National beat up your boss day. <laughs> Oh, the best fight. Fight, fight, fight! Kiss, kiss. Also, poor Ren coming a punching bag at this point. I want to see like a solo fight of Ren versus someone in the future. And where Ren wins for once. Pinocchio versus Aesop's Fable. Taylor versus Hazel. I could watch this fight over and over again. <laughs> yeah, this moment. Um, I literally took a song from Attack on Titan and put it on this scene, and it fits so well. Yo, pop up for Hazel. Shnee Manor versus the Hound. Night at the Shnee Seum. What is this thing? It's just a Grim. Not just any Grim. It's the Hound. Team Ruby and Penny versus Cinder and Neo. It's 5v2. What could possibly go wrong? Yo, Neo just doesn't give a hoot. She's like, is that all you got? And the Oscar for best fight of volume 8 goes to everyone versus ironwood nice it's the anime slash let's see it Game over, Ironwood. Ironwood certainly was one of the biggest hurdles that needed taking down, and it took more than a team to do it. 
from Emerald's Master Deception, Oscar tapping into his potential, Jean, Ren, and Nora going toe-to-toe -to -toe with perhaps the strongest combatant in Atlas, it was still only possible due to Winter's perfect execution and showing the true depths of her talent and combat abilities. Without all of them combined, there was little to no chance. A worthy winner for sure. Wow, Salem like versus Hazel! Fight, there was so much to balance here between all of the weapons I and got powers, second. not to mention needing a snappy runtime, and they pulled it off. Everyone had a moment to shine and a role to play, showing exactly why they're worthy of being where they are. A big congratulations to Kruby and the show for delivering across the board this volume, keeping the combat satisfying alongside everything else that needs to go into the story. A big thank you to everyone involved in bringing us this volume, and a huge Ooh. personal thank you from me to Arnold and Cal for inviting me on to host for you all. I truly hope you're all enjoying the Oscars and appreciate yeah. what a huge undertaking this is. And until next time, my name is Rigger, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope I did alright. Hey, yeah, you did. I'm Kelly. I'm Sani. Hey, Shaolong! Channel Shaolong, where we do Ruby reactions, we do live streams, but advocates of yours and Biha. Other animated shows like The Owl House and Jujutsu Kaisen, and occasionally we dip into cosplay. Yes, Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, I just um, finished that recently. To thanks to Arnold and Cal, Murder Birds and Kalax, and respectively for organizing this and bringing so many Ruby content creators together. And of course, you also guys Kelly bringing that voting on all these categories. nice shirt After and such tie. Such an amazing volume of Ruby. What better way is there to show our passion than being able to vote on our favorite categories and see who comes out on top? Ruby is known for its large cast of main and supporting characters that have only grown in numbers since Volume One. In Volume Seven and Eight, in particular, we have seen a whole host of characters introduced including both male and female characters, many of which have had a great impact on the plot and the fandom as a whole. These are the nominees for Best Male Character in a Supporting Role. A supporting Role. Arthur Watts. Given what we're after, I've got all the He didn't earn the PhD for fun. Sadly, it doesn't make <laughs> taking down Pietro's magical science project any less... Bros before crows, or oh, whatever. I trust you can come up with something. Oh, the trust is palpable. Maro Amin. They might still be alive. Maro. I gave them their window. We can't wait any longer. Can't you see you're Did tearing you see him the apart? Thing if it was your sister inside, are you gonna tell her what you did to her friends? Pietro Polandina. We made decent progress. Pietro. Construction and fuel collection. All potential. I want a Pietro. Pietro chair when I'm old. Same. So that it couldn't launch itself without first being granted clearance from General Ironwood's tow. Crow Branwen. There might be a better Crow. I'm telling you there is Why is my name spelled with a Q? It's about you. It's about everyone. <laughs> I'm going straight up to the academy. Oh, that's clever. Ending this. Or we fail and people get killed. He deserves this. Wetley Schnee. We don't just have perks. Wetley is no longer a We have the company. The people you mentioned uh. in the crater. They need a way out, right? There are rows and rows of cargo ships just sitting in the hangars because of the embargo. And our own automated drones, like the ones at Snowshoe Shipping. We can order as many as we need to pilot our ships down to the crater and get people to safety while the Yo, brother and sister dynamic. Forces. And the Oscar for best male character in a sporting role is... Arthur Watts. Yes! <laughs> you have everything you need? Oh, believe me. This is everything I've ever wanted. Neo. Just four! You deserve this, Arthur. <laughs> deserve, <laughs> yep. Congratulations, Arthur. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. Sorry about it. But to be absolutely yep. fair to Arthur, I thought this was his best season. Yeah. Such a shame that he had to end it by being dead. But exactly. he went on a high and on fire. really did go out on a high and the I'm going to say talk but we all know it wasn't a talk. But the talk that he had with Cinder uh, and the way that he really managed to lay <sighs> himself down into her inner demons whether he meant to or not I thought that was a really standout performance for Arthur in that situation. So I think this is well deserved. Congrats to Watts. Ruby as a show would not have come as far as it has today without its diverse range of female characters. 
many of whom were given a chance to shine best female in a character in the supporting role. Really dark places and put these characters to the test. The nominees for best female character in a supporting role are Blake Belladonna. If only you got an actual upgrade in Volume Seven. Yep. Yeah. Because all she has is just that little yellow. Nothing else. Girl power! May Marigold. It's chaos at the crater. Representation matters. Has its Trans rights! The mantle only has us. People are dying. People are dying here too. Don't you have family in Atlas? No. no. Mantle needed me. And to the Marigolds, that meant I wasn't their son. Son. Anymore. And I made sure that everyone knew. That that I wasn't, wasn't their daughter. Neapolitan. Such Neopolitan, an amazing scene. Now isn't the time to hold grudges. No. A flavor She's of danger right in every me. scoop. I know I haven't upheld my end of the bargain. I'm sorry. I will get hmm. you Ruby Rose today. But to do that, I need to ask the lamp a question. <sighs> What's like, uh, here we go. Weiss Schnee. Snowshoe shipping is an SCC subsidiary. The Schnees are low key homeless, by the way. Company, not the general. The pneumatic tubes allow for dust refined in the crater to be sent straight up to Atlas. We just need to find the one for the military base. Yang Shaolong. You know. Yay. That giant hound kicked us around like we were Being nothing. the big sister that Ruby needs. But Blake said you and the Chinese managed to take it down. Still having to one-up your big sis, huh? And the winner for best female character in a supporting role is... Yang Shou Long. <laughs> Yang! You were being optimistic. Look, blind optimism isn't great, but no optimism means we've already lost. We need hope. We need to take risks. But mine didn't work. Yay. It's still got a warning out. Ruby, they're not called sure things. They're called risks. And in case you didn't notice, my I love this scene of Ruby and Yang either. so much. But we got Oscar back. And did a lot more that was never in the plan. I can't wait to see them again. Man. I think that's a well-deserved win for this volume and everything that you had to go through. <laughs> yeah, you know the whole like punch and the undead. Oh, Neo and Yang tied and falling into super hell. Quite a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that happened for Yang in this volume, but I think she really shone, even though she was obviously going through some things at some points. I'm but sure, I'm sure this will mean a lot to her where she is, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, the first one to fall into Super Hell. I'm sure that this win <laughs> is gonna really make it all know, worthwhile. Make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Sunny. Sunny! I'm so excited to be here presenting a category. A delightful that sunshine in the fandom. Oscars. Thank you so much. Yo, to look at her Carmen dress. Hotel for inviting me to do this opportunity. It's super exciting. It's my first time doing it, and there were some great categories this year. It was a great volume. So I'm super excited to see how this is all going to turn out. On my YouTube channel, I primarily do Ruby reactions. Uh, probably why I am here, of course. Yep. And yeah, I love Ruby. I love reacting to Ruby. It generates some really good emotions in me, and it's just a fun time to watch. And I also dabble in a few other anime-related topics and videos. Uh, for example, I have a pretty popular video where my boyfriend guesses characters from My Hero Academia. I do videos <laughs> like that sometimes, and it's really exciting and really fun. And IRL, I'm also into very different things, especially biology and research. So I have a quite nice. interesting mix of things going on in my life. So I'm going to be presenting the category of Best Antagonist. So Best Antagonist was a category for this Best one antagonist. I'm actually super excited about and really excited to see who would be in the we category. We got 14 minutes left. Win the category. Because this volume was off the rails, let me tell you. I was loving the villains this volume. We got a huge range, character development, everything like that. 
So I'm very grateful also to be presenting this category. So without further ado, these are the nominees for Best Antagonist. Here we go. Arthur Watts. What did you create in Payback's up, Arthur. Cinder baby. I merely added more flames to the fires of Atlas. You hate us because you ain't us. Uh, make it stop. Poor Arthur. Cinder, fall. Failed you again, master. And the award for they worst liar. Go suit, yep. Before our allies fell, Neapolitan killed Ruby. And before Ruby and Liar, fell, liar, plans for hire. I, I couldn't stop them. I couldn't even stop the maiden from escaping without putting the relics in jeopardy. James Ironwood. I am going to do everything. The worst things are done with the best intentions. What in God's name do you think you're doing, James? No matter the cost. And what is this about martial law? Have you lost your damn mind? Are you that scared of what God dang it, dude. Lee, do you yield? You shot him in the side? Yes, he yields. I'm satisfied. A mute and five friends will land on an island. Help! Hey, maybe it could be called friends. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. Salem, look how you've diminished. Remnants 40 <laughs> chess grandmaster. And for what? These children? This ruined world? Why? Coming back. Got to show me. <laughs> and the Oscar for best antagonist goes to Salem. Salem. In pursuit of Mommy Salami. No cost is too great. You've done well, Cinder. Saint Vie as Princess Peach, Princess Daisy, Toad, Toadette, and Birdo, oh and Mario God, games. So excited. That Salem has won Best Antagonist this year. We got so much great Salem action in this volume. And wow, she's just a badass villain, let me tell you that. Yep. And I'm super excited to see her win Best Antagonist this volume. Also, shout out to her whale, RIP to that guy. He was pretty cool. But yeah, Salem takes the cake. I also thought Ironwood might be a contender in this category. But obviously, mm -hmm. people have spoken. And congrats to Salem for winning Best Antagonist. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the final award of the, the show. final one. Reading volume eight would not be the same without the leading characters whose strength and sacrifices carve a powerful, thought-provoking the leading characters the audience in a way that immortalizes them in discussions for volumes to come. These are the nominees for best leading male character. Here we go. Hazel Reinhardt. When he came for me, I killed her over and Gretchen over would be again. proud, big guy. As long as she was gone was only a few hours. Hazel. Before she put herself back together. When I couldn't lift my arms. Anymore, Here we go, guys. She showed me that through her, I could have the vengeance I needed. James Ironwood. I chased a lot of shadows. <laughs> always expecting the truth. But was a man without his humanity. Did I think it would ever come from you? This line. I know what's best for us, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that staff. Oh yeah, tough guy. Step aside. Jean Arc. Please, Winter. Jean Arc. Give us a chance to try to rescue him first. The thinking man's huntsman. We could be your test run. You don't know what'll be waiting for you inside, right? So we can go ahead to check it out and look for Oscar while we're inside. Lai Ren. No! No one Lai is Ren. replaceable. You can't hide what's inside. <laughs> you don't really believe that. You are furious about losing Clover. And you... Mm -mm. Miss you him. miss him. You don't. That's why you lost against Team Ruby. You, you try to fight how you feel about each other, so you'll never truly work as a team. Hmm. Oscar Pine and Ospin. Nice story. Oscar. Jim's death taught me one thing: it was never to trust you. Like-minded souls, Please, indeed. Let me 
But Oscar, you want him to trust us? And trust me. Her name is Jin. Huh? You want her to come out of the lamp? Just say her name. She can still answer one more question. Bro, I love Oscar so After much. And Ozpin. The, the dynamic duo. No. Of man you and password. soul. And hoping you'll find the truth for yourself. And the Oscar goes to... Ironwood! Ironwood! Please! Oscar Pine and Ozpin! <gasps> oh! Farboy <laughs> got an Oscar! Hands the massive yes! power he had stored up in it. Kinetic energy that he spent <laughs> lifetime after lifetime accumulating in the cane he built. Yes! That's how you did that? Using all of the stored up power? Not all, but most. Oscar! With how we use the rest. He trusted my judgment. And Oz! Us. I want to reciprocate that trust. There's a lot to sort out, but... Oz really wants to help. Thank you, Oscar. We finally did it, Reddit. Oscar won an Oscar. Let's go. I Oscar, Oscar won an Oscar. Winning this is, um, I think he was a very new and improved version of himself, especially with everything that he's gone through uh, these last two volumes with confronting Ironwood last volume, uh, pretty much confronting Ozpin upon his return, and really just kind of coming into his own as a character. I don't know how this is going to yep. pair with him, um, you know, with the uh, eventual merging of of the two souls into one but um oscar definitely stood his own this volume uh he, he was truly his own did. person he made all the calls for himself ozpin really just let him take the reins um he was cautious before he taking and, action yeah, I think he definitely deserved this yeah i think that that's so true especially because oscar was really the driving force behind hazel and think about what would have happened if oscar yep. was not able to kind of convert hazel at the last minute to their side right yeah, and yeah. so in a lot of ways like he made decisions that Ozpin wouldn't have made, and so he's becoming almost like a better, mm -hmm. more trusting version of yeah. like what Ozpin I think has always wanted to be, but could never. I want to cosplay as Oscar so like, badly, you know, like, specifically in his Volume Six so recurrent look. Naivete, I guess you know, and so yeah. now with Oscar, like he's a more simple and honest soul too. When you really think about it, it's not just Ruby; it's also Oscar and what he's able yeah. to do for Ozpin because of that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love the way you put that. Like, thinking about Oscar is just becoming a more optimized Ozpin. Um, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. And I, I think this is going to make a lot of people happy because last yes. year was the first Oscar <laughs> exactly. we ever did, and everyone was like, Oscar better win an Oscar, and I don't think he won anything. No. Nope. So. <laughs> well, I think this is well deserved yeah. this time. Congratulations, sure. Oscar Pine. And these yep. are the nominees for Best Leading Female Character. Female. Emerald Sustry. I highly doubt Emerald, the, place you the redemption arc we all wanted. I mean, yeah, you you guys have been getting your asses kicked. Some of that, my fault. <laughs> but like, you're at war. You're gonna take hits. Bro, Emerald, switching sides to the I'm hero. Going to be super pissed if you all finally decide to Plus she cursed in front of sides. everyone. Nora Valkyrie. Don't apologize. I got hurt doing what I always do. Just another self discovery move from Nora. That's self discovery true. can be a beautiful thing. How would you know? We were supposed to be a team, but that didn't matter to you. When things went wrong, you pushed us away. You shut people out so you don't have to feel things that are hard. Penny Polandina. Hey. Penny! Please! I do not like it when friends fight. The protector with a heart of gold. You know Yang and I might not agree on how best to save Mantle, no. but I'm going to scream if it's I Penny. Winter. Please, the general. Please, Penny. They were our friends, but then the Aesops attacked you, and the general. He said people were going to die because of me. Ruby Rose. We shouldn't lie to ourselves. Ruby. I wasted our time being a leader isn't up. all it's all cracked Thinking up to me. Thinking help would come, but it didn't. And Amity fell. I was being childish. Winter Schnee. <laughs> the unexpected loss of something dear. Oh. The path to isolation. 
reference right there. You are going to pay for everything you've done. And the Oscar goes to Please! Please! Penny Pollen Yes! 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 Good. Oh my god! Penny won! Penny won! <laughs> I, for one, am really glad that Penny got this award, considering that this may be the final year that she is eligible. That's, um, yes. that's, that's a low blow. That's a low blow. God damn it. I will not stand for this. Uh, <laughs> but Penny had an amazing character arc this volume. She did. Obviously, that has wrapped up <laughs> in some respect. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I have some hope that we may see her in the Oh, my goodness. I, goodness. I can't believe that. this. You won! Best leading character! In her, uh, in her Best leading character and female! Her and everything that went into, like, those final moments and final decisions. How she was able to sacrifice herself for her yeah. friends. And deciding mm -hmm. that that was the route that she wanted to go, despite the life that they gave her. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I feel like that overall, Penny had a really satisfying arc for me this season. Yeah, uh, no mm -hmm. pun intended, but I love how they humanized her so much. Like, even from her inception, even yep. from, like, her debut in Volume 1, we were always, like, immediately drawn to the fact that despite her being made of nuts and bolts instead of squishy guts, it didn't make her any less real. Uh, than someone like Ruby and um, you know having her back in volume 7 I think reinforced to a lot of people who might not have had um, the time necessary to build an attachment to Penny during the beacon arc um, I think they not only reinforced <laughs> that but pretty much put the nail in the coffin no again no pun intended <laughs> oh my gosh uh, put the nail in the coffin <laughs> for really establishing Penny as a like a bona fide character um, yeah, and so many people I think loved Penny more because yeah, of these past two absolutely, seasons. So absolutely, absolutely. I think that a lot of people at first they were like, mm, they're bringing Penny back. Like they were a little hesitant about the idea. But then yeah. as you see her in Volume Seven and in Volume Eight, I think a lot of people grew to love her in a way that they didn't necessarily exactly. love her before. And I started to so love her more her when she came back. Us, right, her even more than I think it ever did in Volume. Yeah. We all thought she was dead in I, Volume I think Three. In a way that also immortalizes the character, right? Like, like that was a like, shot in the dark from Chapter One of Volume they're Seven. They're really defined by how they go out. You know, like Pyrrha yeah. made a noble sacrifice. Penny did the same thing, and that's a part of the human experience to some degree you know dying for your loved ones or sacrificing yourself i should say for your loved ones whether it's a parent and child um yeah or even in this case friends and i think penny um pretty much established that the one choice that she had this is what i want to do with my life and despite it being yeah. cut short i think that um that made her a, a forever loved character uh, for sure. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Ruby Volume 8 Oscars Awards show has come to a close. We really hope you guys enjoyed uh, all yes. the work and effort that has gone into this. Uh, a big I'm shout so out happy Penny to won. Uh, everybody that has helped collaborate on this effort together. We started this during the halfway point of the volume and just seeing everybody's individual submissions come together with the editing and, and everything else in between uh, yep. was really great to put together. Arnold put a lot into the editing. Doing this with our fellow Ruby tubers, make sure that you guys check them out. They will all have links in the description down below. And you guys should also check out the artist that made our thumbnail, Keith. Oh yeah, Keith. Keith. Down below too. And Thank so you, you guys can go commission him and all of that stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> for all your OC, Pokemon, Ruby type needs. He does a lot of different like OC work and everything like that. Yeah. So if that's something you're interested in, you should definitely check yep. him out. And we will be here continuing to entertain you with videos or with art during the Ruby Volume 8 hiatus. And yeah. thank you to everyone who voted, watched, and we will see you next time. Bye. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> oh, that was so good. That award show. I cannot believe Penny won. That is truly mind-blowing and i'm surprised that everyone started to love her when the volumes of seven and eight went on anyways that was the volume eight oscars i am tired 
I gotta get out of this because it's burning up in my room. Yeah, I just got nothing else to add on this point. The categories were amazing. I loved every single part of this award show. And I can't wait for Volume 9's next year. With all said done, guys, thank you guys so much for watching the Volume 8 Oscars. I'm really glad I was able to give my reaction out there and to share with you guys. Big shout out to all the Ruby content creators that were a part of the Oscars. Go check them out in the link in the description below. And mostly check out Kalax and Arnold in the description because they hit it out of the park this season. With that said and done, thank you all so much for watching my reaction to the Oscars. It's me, Ryan, and I'll... Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.